everybody! Hey! I'm Ashley. And I'm Maggie. We're from Rock Candy Podcast. Kind of like behind the music, except unauthorized and drunk. But come along every week and listen to us talk about artists or albums that you may know really well or may have never heard of while we're drinking beers. Witty things to talk about. Great hot takes with some hot babes. <laughs> That's subjective, but okay. <laughs> So go find us on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn, and wherever you catch your pods. And with that, party, party on, on, kids! Well, oh, that sounded forced. <laughs> is it not? <laughs> hey there, this is John from Pino Comics. And I'm Lloyd, also from Pino Comics. And I'm the other John, and uh, you get it by now. As you may know, we sometimes use language on this show that can be described as... Filthy. Okay. Reprehensible? Uh-huh. Oh, uh, crude? Sure. Nasty. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Come on, guys. We all know that it's just playing out gutter talk. You've been warned. Listen in. Welcome to the Pint Movie Invitational Series. I really am sorry. What are you going to do? My mother wants to stay here. But I don't know. After what's happened, how can I go back to school again? How can I face everyone? Look, um, don't go back until I'm out of here. And we'll, uh, both go back together. I'll, I'll walk you. Thanks to our friend Andrew Morgan, the voice of the Pint Movie Invitational, for introducing us to this next episode of the Pint Movie Invitational. <laughs> and if you're uh, out there and you want to check them out, you can do two things. Go to fistfulofjokes.com, and you can find out whatever shows that Andrew and his uh, brother Jerry are promoting at the College Street Music Hall. And you could also check out the Nomcast, Andrew's awesome web, uh, web awesome podcast <laughs> about Netflix original movies. We did an episode not too long ago. I always forget, what the fuck was that movie called? I am mother. I am mother. I am mother. Yeah. Yeah. He, he's been making fun of me on Twiddler about it. So. Oh, has he? Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> I didn't. Like... I didn't like it. <laughs> it, it. It wasn't great. I think we all agreed that it wasn't great right. on that show. I didn't yeah. like it. Lloyd, how'd you feel about it? It wasn't great. It wasn't great. <laughs> <laughs> so Sir John, the Manster, and Johnny Ganache all agree that I am mother on Netflix wasn't great. No. But we still encourage you or, or, or infer you to go listen to that episode of the right. Nomcast so you can get our whole breakdown of why it wasn't great. Uh, Sean McLaughlin is here with us. Sean, what's going on, man? Hey, not much. Thanks for having me. I'm honored. Oh, thank you, man. <laughs> that, that's a very that's a very uh, heavy word for the yeah, point. It's the first time. <laughs> I don't think anyone's ever been honored to be on nope, here before. No. Did you see I Am Mother on Netflix? I did not. It sounds right. like I shouldn't. Yeah, you pretty much. Yeah. Okay. So it's a uh, uh, yeah yeah no, no. no. Yeah. <laughs> you can see a couple of copycat alien scenes. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. It pretty much yeah. It's it's a it's a it's a, it's a robot raising a baby. It really, it, considering the budget, it's 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 not bad, but uh, it's not good. Yeah yeah. Yeah. So Sean McLaughlin's with us. Sean is. <laughs> oh, you really Sean sold is, me on it. <laughs> Sean is a uh, is a staff writer for HorrorNewsNetwork.net. Uh, he is also one of uh, Scary Larry Dwyer's crew. He, uh, he hangs out the Connecticut Cult Classics. Check them out at ConnecticutCultClassics.com. And also a big part of uh, Connecticut Horror Fest, which at the time this episode comes out, either already happened or hasn't. <laughs> and we either had a great time or are about to have a great time. <laughs> There's also going to be a, a movie premiere of the documentary that Rob and Christine have been working on called Halloween in a Box about you know the, the late 70s, early 80s, the costumes, the vinyl costumes everyone grew up 
Oh, and everybody love. had them. Oh, yeah. they, would, they would rip right. halfway through your trick or treating route. <laughs> yeah, the masks, the rubber band would come off. But oh. you know what? That was that was childhood back then. And, and man, um, they made your yeah. face sweat. Absolutely. So <laughs> right. I, we saw a preview for that. We at did the at last at, CT Co Classics. That's yeah. right. Last Connecticut Co Classics. We had the trailer for it. It looked awesome. And wasn't uh, someone from the company at CT Horror Fest last year? Yeah. So um, Ben Cooper's, uh, you know. I can't quite remember. It's uh, somebody related to Ben Cooper. Yeah, yeah. Son, I believe, maybe. Rob was able to, like, interview, and I think he was there, yeah. too, but he was able to, you know, he's older get some guy. footage for the documentary. Yeah. He did a... talk to Ben Cooper as well, I believe. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, because there was, I think, uh, from reading the description of the of the film, I guess there was three main companies. Ben Cooper's the only one that sticks in my head, uh, name-wise, but there's two other companies yes. that were, like, really vying for the uh, for the Halloween costume market <laughs> well, around, dollar. Around here it was Ben Cooper. Yeah. It was that's what we had on the shelves. And uh in, in the in the in the trailer, <laughs> they they spent a little bit of time in the trailer and I'm I'm sure much more in the movie about how that like 1981 82 Tylenol scare oh yeah, yeah. really yeah. had an effect on the Halloween market yeah. because people were yeah, like, sure like essentially afraid that a serial killer was poisoning people yeah. left mm-hmm. and right with cyanide which was only isolated I think to around Chicago, Chicago. Right? Yeah. And it happened to maybe three or four people yeah, but that was enough to scare everybody yeah. look how it changed the industry yeah so you get plastic wrap around everything mm-hmm. now yeah yeah, totally around my crazy. hot sauce because they're going to put Tylenol in the hot sauce. And we're still talking about we're still we're still talking about <laughs> changing uh, changing Halloween from uh, the thirty first to the last Saturday. Oh, and that. It's still it's going on. Not a fan thing. of that. No. no. Now you, I, I think we, uh, I think I know this just from knowing you. You have a couple of uh, younger kids, right? I do. I have three. You yeah, have three, three kids. Three, three so children, yeah. how does that make you feel thinking about like you know like, like does that taking yourself out of it? Like man, I grew up Halloween's October thirty first. Yeah. How do you feel about that for your kids? Would you feel better for your kids? How or? I feel about it is completely separate from how they feel. About right. It. Um, honestly, things things have changed. They they really are. We think it should always be October thirty first, and I do. But you know, things change. If it's more convenient to have it on the weekends, then that's the way it's going to be going forward. Right. You know. I mean. My children will never hold, you know, They, I have my DVDs and Blu-rays at home. They're never going to hold a piece of physical media yeah. <laughs> in their lives. Right. <laughs> a CD. Not, uh, right. Yeah. I, I had a video cassette or a, a tape cassette of, of something a couple years back. And I think it was my old radio shows from college. So I was like, hey, my, Ryan, my, who's 12 now, he was probably six or seven then. Ryan, check this out. I found my old radio shows from college. I taped them all. And he looked at it and goes, what is that? I said, what the fuck is this? <laughs> <a> tape cassette. <laughs> <laughs> what are I'm those like, holes wow. for? Yeah, what are the holes for? <laughs> yeah. How do I play this? Get the hell out of my life, you don't man! Even think about that. Like these kids have no <laughs> idea what you're even holding in your hands. Yeah, I, I had to laugh at Mark Mazdal today about that. This is for you, Mark. <laughs> Where he he said to me, uh, so the guy sends a sends a tape up to the to the station and they play it on the air. And I looked at him and I said, "Yes, Mark, they have cassettes now that they can play on the yeah. air." No. Yeah, yeah. Like really, you're sh- you're showing your age, man. Yeah. <laughs> hey, man. There's this digital media now. It's it, not even that anymore. It, it's not even that anymore. It, it's 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 like uh, just cassettes as an idea. It, yeah. It's like it, it, it dominated so much of my lifetime, <laughs> and it's been gone for so much of my lifetime. It's right. so weird. Yeah. Yeah. I was know? the master of the mixtape back in the day. Uh, <laughs> you, know? you had the girlfriends. You were like, okay, uh, side one Tesla love song <laughs> is going to go right into. They were they were so port- planned out. It was it's unbelievable. Gonna, it's gonna, oh, but the, with you, it was all like yeah. it was all Cure songs, right? right. Best no, side one track everything. one. Everything. <laughs> Sisters of Mercy. Oh, oh, oh Banana Rama, Cruel Summer. No, 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 no. That's Karate Kid right there for you. All right. So uh, this is this is a Pine Movie Invitational episode, and uh, Sean came on to talk about a movie. Sean, give us the movie that you brought to us, and then I want you to tell me why you brought this movie to us. What please, is the connection? Tell us all why. Okay. So <laughs> <laughs> the movie I decided upon is Gleaming the Cube with Christian Slater. The reason. Why? And I, I realize it's a polarizing movie. Uh, this was, you know, I was 11, I believe, when this came out. Um, it was the height of, uh, yeah, you're a kid, so you go through kind of being obsessed with things. I was obsessed with skating then, during yeah. this period. Mm-hmm. And this movie came out, now being a kid in Connecticut, you know, I had my, my, had my, my deck and, you know, I skated around. I had my vans and I had my Vision Streetwear clothes. <laughs> but honestly, the whole Southern California, Orange County culture, where all this originated from, is so different. Like, any peek into that as a Connecticut kid that you can get is kind of amazing. Thrasher Magazine. Yeah. Yeah. We had the the videos from the video, the mom and pop video stores. 
you know, that uh, right. Santa Cruz and Bones Brigade and all that, you know, would put out of their skaters. That was it. That was pretty much it. This movie came out to me. It was the first movie that kind of highlighted the skateboarding craze. And it, it really, it drew me in. I think, you know, that's got to be why I, I still feel kind of a personal connection to it. This was a time in my life when I really liked skating. And so this was 1989 it came out, right? This was, yeah. Here's something funny about this I, movie. So. And, and I, before you get into that, was it filmed before 89? Yes. Okay. Yeah, 88, I, I thought so. 87. That's 87. Okay. Yeah. This movie was, this movie, uh, let, let's just get into a little bit here. Yeah. This movie came out on January 13th, 1989. In the theaters. This movie was filmed in early to September of 1987. Right, okay. And you could tell, because it's yeah. not even that you could tell if you think about now, now I want to bring this up real quick that mm-hmm. I think is funny, is that we've done maybe 12 of the movie invitational episodes, and we've had repeating things, that which are just weird, because we're picking people by random, you know? <laughs> we we kind of you know knew Sean through Larry, and you know, say, hey, let, let's get Sean on, he's a movie guy. But so far, we've had two movies that were written by, uh, what was the guy's name, John? Um... Adaptation. No, uh, Adaptation. Uh, yeah, Charlie, like Charlie Kaufman. Charlie So we had two random people pick two movies by Charlie Kaufman. Okay. <laughs> we have had two John Carpenter movies, right? We had The Thing with, and Kurt, we had, Russell. Uh, with Kurt Russell, The Thing and Escape from New York. And now we've had two Christian Slater vehicles. Yeah. Uh, we did Heathers, and now we're doing um, Gleaming the Cube. And what I wanted to say about that was, was that these movies both came out within three months of each other. Mm. But if you look at Heathers, which oh, came he's out. so much older. It came yeah. out in April of 89, yeah. Yeah. as opposed to January of 89. Yeah. He's like 21 years old yeah. in that. Yeah. And here he's obviously 16, 17. Yeah. This was filmed much earlier. Now, I, I looked. I could not find anything saying as to whether this was shelved or what, what the problem was, uh, why it took. You know, usually movies are a year, yeah. especially a movie like this. It's not like effects intensive. Whatever reason, this movie did not come out in 1988 Probably when you think money. it would. It might have been money. It could have yeah. been a million things. Uh, the budget of Gleaming the Cube was $10 million. Really? Wow. Which seems yeah. like way, way too much for what this movie should have cost. And it, it made you know, what? It 2. made seven? two point eight gross domestic. Oh, there yeah. were they didn't have any. Uh, it didn't any have international. I don't think it played yeah. up internationally. It very did, well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, especially these these well, characters. I'm and, sure it made it back in in video rentals. Oh yeah, oh yeah, because yeah. it was a big that, thing. <clears> that's how I rent. saw it. Yeah, yeah, I didn't see it in the theater. Right. That's, that's where I discovered it when I was a kid. It's funny, you know, because Sean picked this. <laughs> I had not seen this since I was a kid, but when I was a kid. I did watch this. You know, this is a movie me and my friends would go to, you know, go over to my buddy's house and we'd watch Leaving the Cube. Um, it, it's a kid's movie. It's a 80s. It's it's a weird amalgamation of things. It's an, Sure. It's an <laughs> 80s action-y type movie. It's it, a sports um uh like sports action type movie. Yeah. It, it's it's a it's a skateboarding movie. Yeah. It's a murder mystery. It's encycl- <laughs> it's Encyclopedia Brown. At the age of fifteen on a skateboard is what okay, it is. That, okay. That actually that's, is pretty good. That's pretty you good. You can sell it that way. You can sell it that well, way. Well that's for sure. pretty much yeah. what it was. Yeah. Because the way the adults are treated in this are not the way the kids are treated. If, now what if other skateboard it. movies were there up to then? I think there was one called Skateboard. <sighs> Thrasher. 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 Thrasher with, with, and with, skateboard. With thrashing. Josh, with Josh, thrashing with Josh Brolin. Yeah. Right, that was a pretty big one. Or yeah, that it, was that was nothing like this movie. No, yeah. I mean, no, no, that was that was a straight up skateboarding movie. Like you know, I'm a skater. You know, this right. is this is a murder movie. Yeah, about a kid on a skateboard who's right. a skater uh, that just so happens to have to figure out what happened. To his you, you know what I? You know what I called this to to some? I think my roommate last night. I was trying to explain to him what the movie was about. I said it's. It's it's essentially uh, Beverly the Hills Cop done as a teen movie on skateboards. Yeah, because so, the music is oh, like yeah. it's there's, so eighties. Yeah. yeah, but there's, there's no good music in it. Yeah, I'm well, sorry. there's no there's, there's no good soundtrack. Not a memorable. It's funny. It's a score. It's a totally it's a score. score movie. Suicide yeah. of Ten Tendencies is you know featured pretty prominently. Yeah, like, t-shirts and hats. Are oh up yeah. Really, there's no songs. For no, no, no. I know. I, yeah. I think they missed an opportunity. The, the there. opening, yeah. the opening song during the opening scene is like it's called "Gleaming the Cube," and it's just yes. like one of those typical <laughs> '80s quasi yeah. glam metal shit ball songs. Exactly. Yeah. Like the cheesy oh, that, graphics. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. gleaming the cube. It's so forgettable. <laughs> you gleaming the cube. It's just one of those. It's like one of those terrible, <laughs> so terrible bad. things. Okay, let, let's go before we get into the plot of the movie. Let's go over some of the cast and crew. Oh boy, the plot. This movie was directed by a guy named Graham Clifford. Graham Clifford basically never directed another feature film that was, right, nothing uh, that was very notable. Worthwhile, yeah. He directed a miniseries uh, in the, I think, late 80s called The Last Don that was based on a, mm-hmm. who's the guy that wrote The Godfather? Uh, Mario Puzo. 
Uh, he, it was it was based on a Mario Puzo book. Okay. He directed an episode of Twin Peaks randomly, but where he got randomly. his well, yeah, he just won episode of Twin Peaks. But where he got, I, I think his name might be known more in movie circles. It's cred. Is he was the editor of the Rocky Horror Picture Show. So That's the, how old he uh, is. This guy, oh, yeah. This guy, well, the Rocky Horror Picture Show is only twelve years before this movie was made, seventy five to eighty seven. Uh, he also was oh, yeah, the editor point. of The Man Who Fell to Earth, the David Bowie movie. Oh, that's a great movie. And uh, Fist with Stallone. Oh, oh, uh, Jesus, I should have said that. F-I-S-T. Yeah. John, who started, who started in Fist? Oh, I do Fist. Uh, <laughs> is it F, F, uh, what's the next one? Uh, uh, I. <laughs> this is the last one. All right. Uh, and, then, and then I did Cobra. <laughs> and then I did Cobra. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> I, I, I started, I've started a fire. I've started a fire. All right. So here's where here's where it gets interesting. Graham Clifford uh, directed the movie. The second unit director. Um, he had a couple, but one of them that's uh, I, I guess um, the name is more uh, uh, well known, especially among skateboarding communities. Stacy Peralta. Yeah. Stacy yeah, Peralta, who right. made what Lords of Dogtown and yeah, Dogtown, Dogtown, Dogtown and Z Boys. Yeah. Z Boys. Yeah, so this yeah. guy. So this guy. At the very least. This is one thing about this movie, whether you liked it or not. And we'll get into the whether we liked it or not in the end. There is a lot of skateboarding cred in yes. this fucking movie. Oh, sure. Yes. Like, I could only imagine that, like, true skateboarders, even if they think this movie is like, oh, God, this wasn't a good movie. <laughs> at the very least, can say the skateboarding stuff is incredible. And the people that were involved, I mean, this is essentially like the all-stars of the skateboard world were involved in this. Yeah, yeah. Um, so Stacey Peralta was the second unit director, and he handled almost all of the chore- choreography and the, the, yep, yep. the scenes of, of skating. Yep. Starring, all right. <laughs> As Brian Kelly, who do we have first off? As Brian Kelly, it's, uh, Christian Slater. Christian Slater, at his at his, his youngest. Honestly, <laughs> if I was a fourteen, well, year legend, old, legend of Billy Jean, who's a little bit young. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 If I was a fourteen year old girl in nineteen eighty seven, I definitely would have the Christian Slater with frosted tips up on right. the wall. Oh yeah. For sure. If you're not familiar with Christian Slater, he was in Heather's, as we talked about before. Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, only like four years it after this. He was Will Scarlet. He was Will Scarlet. I can't believe you're my brother, Robin. <laughs> and uh, he was uh, he was Arkansas Dave Rudenbaugh in uh, Young Guns 2. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, okay, so oh. it's Al Lucero, the, uh, the detective there. We have Stephen Bauer. Stephen Bauer, who uh, in this movie, Al Lucero... Is it less of a character than just a bunch of lines put together? Yeah, pretty he's, much. Yeah, he's yeah. an ear flicker. He, he's yeah. an ear flicker? It's the yeah. best thing he does in the whole movie. Yeah. So <laughs> he, he plays the detective that ends up teaming up with Brian to kind yeah. of bring this whole thing like down. like sub- well, substitute fa- uh, father figure, kind of. Kind of. A little bit. And the, you, you're led, and we'll get into the plot in a minute, but you're led to kind of believe that they have a history, but you also led to believe there's no history. It's yeah, very, yeah. Yeah, it's it's very strangely written. It's like uh, yeah, you're yeah. waiting through the whole movie to find out, like, you're waiting you know, for some connection. Connection, yeah, like, right. you know, ever since I was a kid and you've been following, like, there's never an answer to it. The end of the movie actually ends with them leaving together, and you're like, what fucking happened? Here? <laughs> yeah, can, yeah. I, can I just say, I, I, watched, I watched the version of this, and I had to wonder while I was watching it if, if I was watching an edited version, yes. because. Yeah, I know what you're going to say, by the way. There, there's a lot of F-bombs that should have been yeah. dropped. Screw but, up. Yeah, screw I'm a up. screw up, and it's fuck up, obviously. It is. But it's five times it's edited. Okay, and okay. I, I have the DVD, and I also watch it because it's streaming on Amazon. That's where I watch. Yeah, that's where I watch. Within he did the past not... couple weeks. Okay. No, and I remember that since <laughs> the 90s. It's always been screw up. Okay. And their mouths say fuck up. Right. <laughs> See, I didn't notice and, that, but oh, I, watched, it, I watched the Amazon the version, audio and was terrible. there's never any swearing in it. No. I yeah. watched the Amazon version. He says screw up. Because yeah. he does. There's that one scene well, where they, he's like, they I know say it over and over. No, I think they did that probably to get a PG rating, right. I suppose, on R rating. I, I figured as much, but I but I'm like it's obvious. Yeah. Because once he says that, that whole scene in the apartment <laughs> is all dubbed <laughs> right. with the regular dialogue. I'm just a fuck up. No, yeah. you're a screw up. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. I, so, I didn't so know it wasn't it, just me. All but right. the version I saw definitely had no swearing. Okay. So who was that? Stephen Bauer. Stephen Bauer, who was who was also Don Eladio in Breaking Bad. Don Eladio in Breaking Bad, about probably 20 years later and probably a little heavier. 80 pounds heavier. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, he's, uh, he's big. More he's, he's, a, he's, he's a big dude. He's well, a big he's, dude. he's a muscular guy yeah. because the, the character he plays in, in uh, oh, uh, what the fuck was it again? The, the HBO show. Oh, uh, uh, Showtime, uh, Ray Donovan. Ray Donovan. Yeah, he's he's a heavy. He's he's basically the muscle for for Ray Donovan, who's also muscle. I was going to say, I thought Ray Donovan was the muscle. Uh, well, he I've has, never seen the show. But he has was... muscle to back him up. Oh, okay. And, that's, All right. and he's the bigger of the muscle. So <laughs> It's like the kingpin in, in Marvel the having, like, having bodyguards. And yeah. like, why does he have bodyguards? Well, he can kill anybody. And okay. he's not a dumb guy either. He's he's like, he's supposed to be like Estonian and, and has all kinds of military background. So mm-hmm. it's kind of fun. Okay. Yeah, it's a fun show, but... 
He was also, uh, he's probably best known if you're going to pick anything for Scarface. Yep. He was uh, Tony yeah. Montana's yeah. right-hand man who... Uh, but his pants were much tighter in this movie. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is my favorite casting. Richard Hurd, who we all know from Seinfeld as George's boss. Well, you uh, know the him. Yankees. Who, yeah, I know him v. more from V. He yeah. was in V. Yeah, that's how I got to know him yep. very well. And he was v. strangely, uh, he has a cameo in one of the most popular movies the last couple of years. He was the... The, the the guy in the video when they when you finally find out what's happening in Get Out and yeah. there's the video oh, right. yes, he's the right. guy in the video. Yep. Yeah. Wait I th- a minute, what what in, in Get Out when you finally find out at the end yeah. what the whole movie is kind of about and yeah. you see a video of the process. So he he's, was the grandfather. He's the yeah. grandfather oh. that started it all. Yeah. Wow. Um, okay. He's um, obviously who, much older, but who, who by the way I call. Just, I think he passed away recently. Yes, he did. Yeah. yeah. Oh, did he? Yeah. No, was, but I've always, I've always known him as the poor man's Carl Malden. Oh God, yes, exactly. <laughs> okay. Because yeah, he, you're right about that. Very, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> I, I yeah I can see that right away yeah he, I, he I, plays Ed Ed Lawndale <laughs> who I want to describe now okay so we're talking like this is an eighties movie right so if you think about great eighties action movie villains you've got right up there <laughs> nineteen eighty two Lord okay. Humongous from from Road Warrior <laughs> right this muscly fucking hockey mask guy. In Matrix, Bennett, right? Wasn't it Bennett, like the guy who was also in Road Warrior, who he fights at the end and puts him on the steam pipe? Big fucking fight. You got all these guys. And then you've got paunchy 55-year-old uh, uh, Lawndale, Lawndale. Who, who has three modes of being an 80s villain. He, um, he, he carries around a six-shooter a lot. <laughs> he kills... Two people in the movie, sort of by accident. He he shoots one guy in, a, in like a scuffle. He accidentally kills another guy later, kind of in a scuffle. And then his most villainous feat in the whole movie is at the end when he's got the the heroine uh, <laughs> held hostage. He just yells orders to the driver throughout the whole thing. Oh, <laughs> turn right here! Cut that car off! The, the Get most, faster! The most ridiculous good carjacking yeah. incident ever. The, just... That that scene, and we'll again we'll get to it. There's a chase scene at the end of this movie. Where he's in the back of the car, just screaming yeah. at the driver for twenty fucking straight minutes. Yep. Put the lights on. Put the lights yeah. on. Stop at that McDonald's. Oh, God. <laughs> go through them. Go, go through them. Give me that. Yeah. Yeah. Give me yeah. Go through them. Yeah. Go through them. Oh, the yeah. pizza. What, one of the strangest uh, villains I've ever seen in a movie. Honestly. Yeah. Other than the people being accidentally killed, it just really doesn't make much no. sense. Yeah, it's no. hard to buy. Really. <laughs> yeah. Oh God. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Vin <laughs> Kelly. Vin Kelly, the brother character of uh, of um, of uh, Christian Slater's Brian Kelly, is played by I'm going to say this totally fucking wrong, and I apologize. Art Chudabova. 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 This guy is basically wow. just a a kind of a, a, a day player actor, I guess you could say. But John got a connection to you. He was in. Uh, I know you're not a fan. He was in an episode of Deep Space Nine. He was on <laughs> Boston one. Legal, and he was in an episode of Babylon Five. Hmm. Uh, Ed Lauder? Well, th- anybody can be on Battle on Fire. Well, you just throw a mask on. I this mean, guy this guy was. Ed Lauder, who played <laughs> Mr. Kelly the Father. He was from Revenge of the Nerds 2. He was in School Ties as well with Brendan Fraser. Ed Lauder has a long, long list. Very long history. Yeah. And he died in 2013. Yeah. 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 He plays yeah, the father in this. Wow. Yeah. 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 And then we're going to round it off. We'll just do two, two quick ones. Uh, <clears throat> Max Perlick. Yes. Uh, played Yabo. Yabo, and uh, he's he was in Justified for for a while. The, he, he's been in a lot of things. He's been in a lot of things. Yeah, he got very heavy later in life. Oh, did he, really? he was in Justified. He played a kind of a fat guy. I don't yeah. remember. Him being uh, fat cliffhanger, yep. uh, drugstore Cliff, cowboy. Can't buy me love. Can't buy me love. Can't buy yeah. me love. Yeah. And then Tony Hawk. I mean, yeah. if you don't know who Tony Hawk is, this is what I wrote: the most popular skateboarder <laughs> in fucking history <laughs> ever. He plays Buddy and Tony Hawk in this movie. If you were to say, like, if you were to, like, like weird science, like, in weird science, they had, they made, like, the perfect woman. If you were to weird science and go, I want a dude that looks like he's from California, like, <laughs> Tony Hawk, literally, he's tall, he's blonde, his hair's over one eye. He just looks like he is, like, this, like, maybe not as muscular as you would think, but this is the Californianist dude in the world. He's and he's up, probably... Thin. He's probably like 20 years old. Yeah, in this he's movie. really young in this. Yeah. yeah, and I was reading up on him because I mean everybody knows about Tony Hawk to an extent. He's still obviously he's he's got an empire, he has video games, and he's <laughs> still the only guy to ever do what a like a 900 degree flip. He's got all these yeah. like things. He's been married like five fucking times. Yeah, Holy married shit, and divorced really? like five fucking times. Yeah, yeah. kind of crazy. Not, not very smart in. <laughs> yeah, with his money too. Yeah, you gotta wonder. All right, hey, so you know, I got a question. Yeah, before yeah. we go on. I'm curious. Uh, I, I know yes for sure with Sean. Yep. <laughs> Were you a skateboarder? Did you skateboard? Yes. You did? Yes, to an extent. And I'll tell you the movie that got me into it was not mm-hmm. this. Guess what movie got me into skateboarding? And it got probably every kid my Back to age, the Future. Back to the Future. Yes, back the hoverboard. The oh, no, no, no. no, no. no. <laughs> the, first, the, the first one. The first yes, one. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. 
Just I, I wanted a skateboard immediately after that. I bought one, <laughs> skated around with my friends, but I was always more of a bike rider. Yeah, you know. Yeah. yeah. You know, just John? Like, no. My Never. brother, my brother did skateboarding in the seventies uh-huh. and built oh, old style longboard. Uh, yeah, built yeah. his own deck and and all the cool. all the trucks and everything were basically the the same company. I think is still <laughs> around, if I remember right. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, by the time he got out of it, it was starting to kick off, and I had no interest. Mm-hmm. Plus, the, the the I mean, the skateboards were. The size of my feet. I was. Yeah. Like, what the hell's the point? Yeah. Boy, were you? Uh, yeah, yeah, I was a skateboarder. Yeah. Yeah, you enjoyed uh, it too. Late seventies, early eighties. Wow. Yep. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Stacy Peralta, the power yeah. Peralta. Period. When yeah. uh, when you were doing it though, did you ever like tear apart actual skates and build your own skateboard like some I, some you, of my brother's friends did? We did get into building some, and not no, not like that. Uh, oh, they they had <laughs> we a, a had like. Bit. Ancient. We did. We went about the trucks and you know, yeah. We, we had did, ancient roller did you skates. Rip, rip the box off. Like <laughs> <laughs> seriously. Um, so back to the future. Yeah. I, I wish we still had one of the old <laughs> things. scooter. Yeah. yeah, it was. It was basically the same thing because it was old metal uh, roller skates that they took apart and put on plywood and created their own skateboards back then. Yeah. But by by the time they got into the money, you know, they're yeah. working in the. In the and, <laughs> and I'll tell you, working the fields. <laughs> one thing for sure, I've I've gone down some pretty steep hills, gone pretty fast, and I can't handle that the speed wobble that you get. And you know, I just about yeah. skateboarding is definitely that, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's a yeah, skill. Yeah, it's, it's a, a skill yeah. for sure. I'll, I'll clarify. I was about a year <laughs> before yeah. I gave it up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah I'll eat a, you know, half an inch. All right, I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> Too dangerous. <laughs> he he got his he got his one ollie out, and he's like, I did yeah. it. I'm done. <laughs> I did it. But yeah, no, I was watching I that scene where they were going down the curves, and you know, he's doing all these. No, the skateboarding where they like moves off the back and going down the with the car. The skateboarding is great. Is amazing in this movie. Where do you even get the equipment anymore? I mean, where do they sell this stuff? It's still huge. Yeah, skateboarding you get anywhere. Is still huge. Yeah, really. absolutely. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. another story. Sophie comes home with a skateboard the other day. She goes, I found it in the woods. I'm like, whoa, whoa, what? what? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> she and a friend were walking from the friend's house to the West Farms Mall, and they came across a skateboard in the woods. And she came back and told my wife, we have to go to the woods because there's a skateboard in there I want. And, and we told her, no, you're not taking that skateboard. It might be there might be someone's mode of transportation. They <laughs> ditch it in the woods. They go to the next day. She went there. We said, give it 24 hours. She came back. It's still there, mom. Go ahead. Take it. Take Cheers. it. Yeah. <laughs> so she's been riding around <laughs> up and down our driveway, down the street on a skateboard. Like you want to know what I found in the woods when I was a kid? Wet porno mats. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. That was the best. Yeah. 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 I, would, I remember we used to have pot. Yeah. Well, I found it some inside man. a dumpster. <laughs> no, no, straight up. I remember, I remember, oh, yeah. I grew up in Middletown and we used to. We used to walk from the apartment complexes I lived in through the woods to get to the movie theater on the weekends to see movies with my friends. Yeah, all those and woods are gone now. The woods are gone now. <laughs> but, like, I remember one time going through, and we just, I'm like, what is that? We go over, and there's just a soaking yeah. wet porno mag oh. with 70s bush, oh, early yeah. 80s bush. Oh, yeah. And I just remember, oh, yeah. like, being like, oh, my God, jackpot. And me and my friends, like, <laughs> wrung it out and kept it and... You yeah. know, whatever you do with that kind of stuff at that time, I'm not going to discuss that. Anymore. That was like I, a dream. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm like, you, I just found a fucking porno. I'm like nine years old. I'm in the woods. Oh, yeah. I shouldn't yeah. be here as it is. And now I've got fucking like, I've got like, it's not even like Playboy. It's like a hustler. Yeah. yeah. Like oh, there's yeah. there's dirty shit happening. Like we, in this. You know, yeah. Oh, we, 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 we found a whole stack of club internationals. And there, there, was a, there was a woman in one of them that looked like our art teacher. Ooh. And nice. we were almost certain it was her. We were all concerned. <laughs> <laughs> no, we weren't concerned. We were like looking, you know. Like, oh. No, I found a big no, stash. Right? I used to have a paper like route. Her. Yeah, you know, go there and then dump dump shit in the in the dumpster. And, and I'm looking at, what's this? <laughs> I crawled right inside that dumpster, got all fucking swank and everything nice. else. Nice. Bad, oh, the good bad. stuff. Oh, yeah. good old Al Goldstein. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Screw. Yeah. Your dad sits you down with a Playboy. He's like, I want to teach you all about the birds and the bees, Lloyd. Like, Playboy. He's like, I got yeah, a copy of Screw in the back of my fucking. <laughs> In the back of my fucking it's my, my, my little Air bicycle. bullshit. I don't. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. I'm all about the fucking bush. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you, know, you know, Bush Mills puts out a new product called Red Bush. Oh, really? Yeah. That's uh, that, that yeah. sounds intriguing and horrifying at the yeah, same time. Yeah, that's right. what I thought when I saw it. I didn't write her name down because uh, it was kind of like a, just an afterthought. But as I watched Gleaming the Cube, what was the what was the girl's name who, who like in the in the movie? What was her name? Tina. Uh, Tina. Yeah. Okay. Could not place her. Right, I could not yeah. place her. Yeah. So I she's in a couple Jackie Chan movies. No, you know who she is? It's actually kind of funny. So I'm watching she is one of the girls in uh Big Trouble in Little China. 
I don't know which oh, one she is, okay. but, but I knew I knew her from somewhere. All right. She literally has three credits to her name. Big Trouble in Little China, Something in Between, and Gleaming the Cube, and that's, <laughs> oh, it. that's it. She became something else. I don't yeah. know, or hopefully nothing bad happened to her. But <laughs> <laughs> if something bad happened, I'm sorry. If you ended up becoming Gleaming something else, Gleaming the Cube. <laughs> Gleaming the Cube. <laughs> Every day it's harder. Gleaming the Cube. <laughs> I'm gonna, you know, maybe for the next episode, I might, I might write my own song, an '80s version of Gleaming the Cube. All right, so, <laughs> Sean, you are a guest. We've been talking about this movie now for a while, but I want you to tell everybody out there. I want you to do what we call the bumper sticker. What is the plot of Gleaming the Cube? What's going on in this movie? Okay, so the skating is secondary. It's totally. <laughs> uh, what is going on is we have this poor misunderstood kid. I don't know if this is going to fit on a bumper sticker, but. Um, <laughs> You know, who's anti, he's very rebellious and he's anti-parent and anti-adult. Um, has an adopted uh, older brother, Vin, who they love because he's, he's a good kid. He's the opposite of Brian. And he gets mixed up in something by accident. We'll get into what he's mixed up. Oh, yeah. I'd imagine, right? Okay. And gets accidentally killed. Um, it looks like a suicide. Brian doesn't believe it is. So it's him against the world and Lucero. <laughs> Lucero's the only one yeah, who believes Lucero's him. Lucero's chilling with him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so they go on a crusade <laughs> together to figure out, you know, what happened and to break up this whole gun <laughs> shipping. VAC. Uh, yeah. VAC. Oh, I got it right here. <laughs> Anti-communist group. Uh, Anti-communist. Yeah. yeah. The, uh, the, the, uh, where the fuck did I write the R? it? It's like V-A-C-R. V- Vietnamese Anti-Communist Relief Fund. Yeah. That's yeah. Which, yeah. which I find ironic because um, it's it, – so this is 80 – it was shot in 87. But right. 89 when it comes out, early 89, Berlin Wall doesn't fall to what, 91. Yeah, So 90. we're still in the height – kind of the height of the Soviet Union yeah. and the Cold War – and the Berlin Wall still standing, and and the bad guys are the anti-communist relief fund. Yeah. They're shipping guns <laughs> yeah. over Isn't that weird... to Vietnam yeah. to fight the communists. Yeah. <laughs> Just, yeah. But they're the bad guys. Yeah, it, it's. It, I guess maybe when we were watching it then, it felt differently than it does now. I I don't know. Well, I think I think in the end, the bad guy is supposed to be the white guy. Like the, I the guess? guy owns the warehouse and yeah. And well, he big, goes nuts, but he does go nuts. Yeah, he wasn't doing it for the right reasons. He was right. just trying to make money. Right, right. right. <laughs> so, and you didn't mention, but it it, it bears to be uh, brought up that Vin is adopted and is Vietnamese. Yes, right. Sorry, yeah, no, that's, no, that's fine. I just want to bring that up because yeah. that's that's important to the plot. So, so you're right. It becomes a, a becomes a, a detective encyclopedia Brown on a skateboard. <laughs> Uh, Brian is not going to rest till he figures out what happened to Vin right off the bat. Well, you should say this too. The, it's, it's important for for the whole movie is that the two characters really do like each other. They do. There's yeah. there's a obvious division between Vin being the clean cut, studious type, and what's his name, Brian? Brian. Brian, Brian. being the the rebellious teen with uh, the posters all over the wall and the messy bed and everything. And they live. They're in the same room, which is great. Which which gives some of the yeah. some of the best scenes in the movie, but it's got the they, cramps poster. Yeah, up on the wall. I mean yeah, they yeah, they yeah. genuinely like each other, and Vin knows that his brother is smart because they're playing chess mm-hmm. and they're kind of constantly doing yeah. that kind of thing. I mean, they're, it's it's a good relationship between the two. It's it's a it's actually the best part of the movie for the for story content, I think. Um, and you get the feel why Brian is got to find out why his brother gets killed yeah yeah so, yeah yeah that's a believable relationship it, it, it really is, is. It, it there's there's a scene later that we'll get to that, yeah. that i think is one of the the most believable in the movie so yeah because vin straight up like vin does brian's homework yeah but he, he says to me he goes i don't have to do this for right you. like yeah. You, yeah. you're just lazy stop yeah. being yeah. fucking lazy <laughs> and uh, and vin also i wanted to bring this up because i just thought it was awesome has the most strange computer i've ever seen in a movie, you know what I'm talking about? That little laptop thing he carries yeah, around that yeah. looks like it, it. I don't know. It, it like it looks like a fucking suitcase nuke. Like when he opens it up, it's got the. It's just oh, it weird. Was, it was probably a. It looked like a word processor. Yeah, more than yeah, it. yeah. Right. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Maybe that's what it was. But it was like when he he pulls it out twice in the beginning, and I'm like, what the fuck is going on with mm-hmm. this thing? So Vin had just recently got a job with uh, with a character uh, called the Colonel. <laughs> the Colonel. Uh, the not <laughs> yeah. Not Colonel Sanders. Tro- not Colonel Sanders. With his L.A. Rams hat on. Which <laughs> he. What's this old dude, is new again. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> I want. I, I wrote that as a note. This guy, Colonel Trock, mm. loves the fucking Los Angeles oh, Rams, yeah. and oh, this yeah. is like Jim Everett era Los Angeles Rams. Right? <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> he is all about the Rams. There is a Rams fucking right. jacket. There's a Rams hat. <laughs> Brian actually steals the Rams hat at one point later in the movie, or to use it. 
I'm like, is this was this movie like brought to you by the fucking Los Angeles Rams? <laughs> probably needed it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> there, yeah, there wasn't a lot of product placement, but what there was was yeah. there the scooter, the scooter, oh, the scooter, yeah. the Los yeah. Angeles Rams, Disneyland, yeah. Disneyland, Disneyland is all over. Yeah. Disneyland yeah. is all over this motherfucker, yeah. like and the old school like 50s or 40s Disneyland yeah. logo. Yeah. Half of the movie, the the actual the, the death of Vin takes place in a motel like a block away from Disney right. with the huge sign right there. Right there, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the uh, what was it called? Does anybody remember? It was like the Future Lodge or something? Oh no, it was this. Oh god, Cosmic Lodge. No, it was Atomic. 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 Lodge. atomic yeah, Everything atomic was Atomic Lodge, Age. Yeah. yeah, that's right. So Vin ends up getting a job with the Colonel, and uh, and and I thought this was a great scene. He is for some reason uh, doing the books for the Colonel. And and I, I guess this is maybe a shitty thing for me to say, but like, you know, the, the kind of the joke everybody has on earth is that Asian people are great with math. <laughs> I thought it was a great scene where he takes like ninety five hundred right. minus seventy five hundred yeah. equals two thousand. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I'm shitty at math and I can do that without writing that shit down. <laughs> and I just thought like and then he's like, he's so puzzled. I'm like, he just wrote he it's like literally like he just did ten minus nine equals one. <laughs> oh my god. He figures out, right, Sean, that yep. like something doesn't add up yeah. in like in in the medicines and the relief yeah. stuff they're sending back to to Vietnam. Yeah. And then he strangely gets super fucking obsessed with this to the point <laughs> yes. that he starts smoking. Right? Like he becomes yeah. a different person. Well after he gets fired. Yeah, he, he gets, he gets fired right. because first they have the weekend at Bernie's moment. <laughs> we guys messed up. No we didn't. All right. Well why don't you come <clears> to my uh, place this weekend? You're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And when he when he goes to what's his name, Colonel Troc? Troc. And he tells him, you know, I didn't expect it to go to weights. He was talking about the weights of the shipments. Yeah. He was saying, yeah, uh, you know, heavy. this is, yeah. a, you know, a yeah, pallet of cotton balls right. and it's 500 pounds. Yeah. yeah. Why would you, I, I didn't get why, like, why the colonel, if you're doing this, like, kind of, a, you know, again, he's supposedly shipping medicines back to his, his Vietnamese brother, brethren. But instead he's shipping back, like, AK-47s and yeah. shit, yeah. you know, to, to help fight. <laughs> and that's, okay, we get yeah. that. But like, why do you give your two week employee? I don't. I I work at a job where if I have someone in two weeks, they don't even. They're not able to ring no, someone out. He was recommended right? very well. Yeah, he he was recommended by somebody, and now he's got him like figuring out the weights and measures of AK forty sevens in the back of a video. In the store. back of a video store, which yeah. I could not. When later on in the movie, when they mention it's a video store, that's the only way I knew it was a video store. Yeah. Because when you see the store. You're like, what is happening in this store? It, it yeah. looked mm-hmm. kind of like one to me. It a very looks small like, one, but yeah, just the, was... just the front. It's a front for something. Yeah, obviously. yeah, yeah. obviously. Yeah. Just the, the front of the store. You see some tapes in the right. back, and there you go. Vin figures out something's something's going wrong. He breaks into the warehouse uh, to because he's obsessed now. <laughs> he breaks into the warehouse to find out exactly what's going on. And he gets caught by... Uh, he trips the, the, the laser alarm. He trips the yeah. laser alarm. I was going to say, it was the, the <laughs> easiest break-in I've ever seen. And well, then I'm like, oh, wait, it's it's 1980-something. Uh, so, yeah. yeah. Not just 1987. Yeah. cake back then. Not, yeah. just, not just 1987, but this building is broken into in the same way three times in this movie. Right. <laughs> just, yeah. just through the, yeah. that's, just through that's the roof, like, yeah. Uh, so the he, ladder goes all the way to the ground. Yeah, you know? <laughs> he gets caught right. by he gets caught by the the villainous uh, the villainous Ed Lawndale. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> with, with with a six shooter and his bad hairpiece, his bad <laughs> terrible hairpiece. And am I the only one that thinks? And again, this isn't. I'm not. It was. It seems like he somehow got chosen from the Karate Kid Two yeah. to be like his little his sidekick there. Remember, chosen the guy oh, on the well, island. You, you that know who that was? Him? Who is that? He was he was in big trouble too. He was. Uh, not thunder, but uh, he was one of the storms. Yeah, he was one of the storms. He looked so fucking familiar yeah. to me. Yeah. He's done a whole ton of things. Yeah. Oh wow! <laughs> Did you know that? No, I didn't know. All right, all right. So he's he's yeah, he's he's got a very distinct face. So yeah, he's the yeah. muscle for uh, yeah. for <laughs> Colonel. Tr- yeah. Now, what is their what is Colonel Track and Ed Lawndale's relationship? What like so, what are they doing here? Uh, Lawndale owns. Westpac Medical Supply? Is that the name of oh, it? Oh, Jesus. You know a lot yeah, more. So no, he wrote, he wrote <laughs> WMS right. on the paper. Yeah, that WMS. Was, right. It was on the side of the, the building, sh- The too, inventory. So. Yeah. So he owns that, and Truck is going through him to ship this. You know, the medical supplies full of guns and hand grenades and right. machine guns Ammo. to Vietnam. So as far as I know, Truck's paying them extra because these things weigh so much. And Westpac Medical Supply is shipping it over there. I guess it. They don't come right out and say it. No, they never do. There's yeah. a great scene, a, pretty, like, kind of in the middle of the movie, where they're at a Chinese <laughs> restaurant and they're discussing business, and but they're doing it way too loudly. Yes, <laughs> like they're they're talking, and he's like, you know, 
we can't have any more trouble with these AK-47s, truck. <laughs> and then the guy comes over and is like, would you like some water? And he's like, oh, absolutely. And you think that they're going to like settle down on the voice. And then yeah. the next one's like, yeah. if anybody else finds out we're shipping RPGs to Vietnam. <laughs> <laughs> it was a great scene. It was hey, it was a fantastic That was scene. a great tagline. Nobody knows anything except a kid on a skateboard. Right. Oh. That's it, where it, that line comes from. Is that, that the actual too. tagline for the movie? Yeah, no, I don't know. Oh, <laughs> <okay>. <laughs> probably should be. <laughs> Nobody knows anything here. except for a kid on a skateboard. Oh. Uh, Oh man! So, and, and then, uh, well, go well, ahead. I just wanted to bring up. So, so they they bring the the thunder or chosen from the it wasn't thunder. Kid too. It was was he the one that he was? No, the he was one, the one with the lightning. Lightning, yeah. He he does this uh, like I guess Vietnamese Viet Cong torture method that, oh, that he's had done on him. Yeah, you should be right. fine. No, I I had it done. Yeah. He and I didn't die. He <laughs> he soaks a, a, a twisted a, towel, a twisted towel from the atomic lodge, like uh, the kind that you flick. Yeah, you'd fl- you flick someone in the ass. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sure, he soaks it with water. <laughs> he twists it up, and then he, he he proceeds to choke Vin. He's like a tourniquet around the neck. Yeah, he right. proceeds to choke him. I guess into into like a what did you tell? What did you gonna, tell? He's gonna he's gonna. But then he goes too far. And he kills him because even though he's had it done to him before, apparently he's never had it done to him before by someone that was so fucking strong <laughs> or had a murder boner. I don't know what it was. So Vin is dead. Uh, they end up setting Vin up off screen. They end up setting Vin up as a suicide victim, yep. right? So the, yeah, the, like he hanged himself. Hanged yeah. himself. And this is where Brian gets in, and and uh, there is actually kind of an emotional scene. I mean, it, you know, no tears, but the scene where the where where the principal brings him out to the car, and, yeah. and it's like it's, it's out of earshot, yeah. right? Right. Yeah. And it, you know, there's already this strained relationship between his dad and him. Yeah. And you just have this moment where he's like completely not believing that Vin's dead. The, the I like that. The scene, just to, just to backtrack a bit, the scene that I really liked in the movie was the one where when Brian comes home and he finds Vin smoking in his room. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it, it was this weird, it was a well-written scene. He comes in and, and Vin's being a real dick to him. And he's like, I'm just going to step out right. <laughs> and come back in and yeah. see that, if my brother's in here. That was my favorite scene, too. It, it was just so well written. The two characters are really uh, running on all cylinders. They're yep. acting well together, and yep. it's it's vintage uh, Christian Slater. Yeah. yeah. It really yeah. is. Yeah. And and you could see at that point where Christian Slater's career is going to go because that, that has the best acting that he's got in the whole film. Yeah. I mean, it, it was good. Yeah, and no, I sat there and I was like, "Oh, maybe this movie's going to be really good." Then the next scene happens. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, that was a good scene for. There were a lot of good lines that he had yes. there too. Yes, definitely. About the ironic thing is, he said, "You know, adults are predictable." Yes, mm-hmm. it's crazy to think there's going to be anything in thirty years, yep. and now we're thirty years. Into this movie exactly. <laughs> when, when, when he said that, I actually went to my head. I went, "This we're thirty years later right yeah. now. I'm watching this thirty years later right now." <laughs> and he's right. There's nothing. Right. And there is nothing, and I am predictable. So. <laughs> It's, it was it was good. I mean, it was a good scene. It's well written, and it's just it's too bad that uh, the guy that played Vin didn't go on to do much more. I mean, he was pretty good. Yeah, I want. I didn't bring up earlier the guy who wrote this uh, movie, a guy named Michael Tolkien. Uh, oh yes, I wanted to bring that up. Yeah. He wrote, and here's some of the movies he wrote. Uh, yeah. I've never seen it, but he wrote Deep Cover, which was a Lawrence Fishburne yeah. uh, movie in the early nineties. Jeff, uh, Jeff Goldblum. Yeah. Uh, keeping in the theme of Deep, he wrote Deep Impact, which was like serious <laughs> Armageddon. Yeah. <laughs> they came out right at the same time as Armageddon. Yep. I do like that movie too. It's actually a pretty solid movie. Yeah. And uh, and then one I didn't care for was a Ben Affleck movie, uh, early two thousands, Changing Lanes with yeah. uh, Samuel, Samuel Jackson. Oh, yeah. But uh, but yeah, this so this guy went on to write some more stuff. But yeah, yeah. He's, he's got a pretty good list. Of yeah, he's got he's got a good so. list. And, and you're right, like the the scenes, it is kind of sad. I mean, I didn't hate this movie, but it is kind of sad that like <laughs> the Vin stuff ends so early because yeah. that is like you don't. He is the best part. He, 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 really, the, he is them the together. Fit. Yeah, he's yeah. the most memorable. I think guy in them at together, least the yeah. first half well, of the movie. He's definitely yeah. the strongest character right off the bat. Yeah. Uh, you you get good feel for him. You you really get into and, and you missed out on this was the the woman that plays the. Mom. Mother, she she's was like, way familiar to me. Well, she was in uh, when you were sleeping. <laughs> Believe uh, it or oh, not, oh Sandra Bullock. Yeah, I think I saw that once. Oh really? Oh, yeah. that's a good movie. So- <laughs> Fucking a, the shit that you pull out. Wow. The shit that you that's pull surprising. out. Yeah, <laughs> I love to throw that shit at you. It's, <laughs> but um, the, the she she's kind of the linchpin to make. She really believes in Brian. I mean, you really get that feeling going on when she's buying him the skateboard accessories. That was, I love that scene. Mm-hmm. I, I love the scene where she says to him, "I, you know, she I, loves I, what he does." I don't, I don't get it, but right. you're so graceful and so good at yeah. it. Yeah, I, I, like that's the ultimate mother. Like, oh yeah. Okay, yeah, I don't get what you're doing, but you're so good at it. I want you to be safe at it and yeah, keep and she, doing and it. And yeah. she's supporting him no matter what. But they, they, they really like Vin. They really love Vin, obviously, and and just 
there's some good family dynamic going on there, but there's there's a little bit of a slippage, obviously, between uh, Brian and his father. And yeah. you're going to get that kind of thing, especially. And, and, I get it as a as a teenager. It's just. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. and like you said, too like, many egos, man. Yeah. And like you said, go, going along with like the good family dynamic scenes in this movie, there's another one that I thought was great. Was when it's a little bit later in the movie <clears throat> where Brian comes home and, and his dad's dad. watching the videos. Yeah, yeah. and, and it's, great. it's again, it's another scene that's like kind of silent where Brian is watching. And the whole, the whole video is it's a family video. And the father and Vin are playing frisbee, and Brian is being a douchebag. You know? yeah, he really like, is. I don't like frisbees. I don't want to play frisbee. The the great part about that scene again, like kind of like a non-verbal, is Brian watching it and like mad at himself. Yep. Like he's like he's holding his head. He's like you know, and you the know shit what you miss. Yeah, he's like yeah. he's like I fuck. Why didn't I just fucking play frisbee that day? Right. You know. Yeah. yeah there but, was a but, lot of really kind of like. And I don't was, think about it. There was is like, that what preceded his change? This was it was it right was after, after his change, yeah. Yeah. right after, after yeah. his little change, yeah. and, yeah. which and, takes um, away from it a little bit a little, to me, yeah. just because that's what it takes. He had to completely transform for his father to actually sit back and relate to him now, right. instead yeah. of just relating to the kid how he, he should be, which is he's a, he's a rebellious kid. Well, yeah. the skateboard, the, you know, the father character is kind of a, a non-entity here. I mean, he's he's just there. He's he's almost a just a a thing to discuss and a thing to. Stir up some emotions on on a, on a slighter level because you're you're yeah. focused in on the whole Vin stuff and mm -hmm. but you do get that one good scene there where he he just turns around to him and goes I wasn't very good to you <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, well again like you, like you said like like the father has all these issues with the kid yeah and now the kid is like seeing his and then the father's even like you know I I I should have paid more attention to you yeah yeah you know like like again like you and know, he gets arrested and it was <laughs> <laughs> and it immediately it's right back to grabbing his arm yep. getting him out of there yeah. you asshole <laughs> yeah yeah well, and 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 so as we're going along in the movie and as uh, Brian is going through and uh, investigating what happened to Vin he runs uh, a foul of the uh, of the lightning character i, I don't know his you know what yeah, his name was I, uh, oh uh, bobby nguyen bobby nguyen yeah, that's right. bobby nguyen yeah. right. He runs a follow Bobby Nguyen, and uh, and and then <laughs> Bobby Nguyen gets uh, gets killed uh, by uh, by Lauder or was it Lawndale again? Uh, Lawndale and uh, and Colonel Trock. yeah, because that gun just came out of nowhere. You he know, just, <laughs> he's, he's got that little. Well, it was under this. Well, he was in the back seat of the car, like laying down on yeah. the floor. He witnesses it. Yeah, and, and he and sees then, the gun under there. Right. Right, yeah, it's very dark, so it's really no, hard. The actually, there was there that. was a gun and a knife. Yeah, yeah. and uh, and Bobby Nguyen pulls the gun out. He's going to confront Lawndale, and I, he he wants that he wants a uh, what a trip out to the Bangkok. To Bangkok, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, but not a jerk off. Fifty thousand dollars, right? Right. Don't, you, don't give me a jerk off handjob. <laughs> that was the best <laughs> line in the whole fucking movie. I actually wrote that. I, I wrote that in my notes. I wrote jerk off handjob. Um, oh man, yeah, jerk off handjob. Well, you have to think about it too. The the guy that's playing Trock. Colonel Trock, yeah. it, for each and every death, he's just like, okay, what are we doing with the body? It, it, he just yeah. doesn't <laughs> seem to give a shit. I, you know, I've been through this before. We need to get rid that, of the body. We see, need that's to what, that bothered me a little. No one ever seemed to give a shit about <laughs> anything. Yeah. Like even when Vin died, yeah, they were, I didn't they were so... feel the grief of the family at all. I did. I mean, you really I got did. a little bit when a he little. was watching the video. Yeah, well, not not just that, but when when he gets called out of school. You get that with yeah. that scene yeah, you were yeah, talking that, about. Yeah, that one moment, but but yeah, you don't really I, get it with the family because yeah, they're glossing over a lot of that. They're, I, they're trying. I, I to get, understand that, but yeah. I, I just I didn't feel it. I, Come yeah, on, the, Brian, Brian showed up in his Sunday best. Yeah, yeah, right. Skateboard to put the to put his you know his his night or his king down yeah. as a surrender move. But <laughs> like uh, the, the whole time, I'm just like, man, this could this kid can wear a fucking suit for one day. Yeah, you know, he's wearing like his buzzcock shirt or whatever it is, and all the pins on the it, pins all over it. It's like, come on, kid, we get it. You're edgy. You're at a fucking yeah. funeral. Don't be a douchebag for one day in your life. <laughs> all right, so Sean, what what it's else? So uh, what 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 else? When you think about bits of this movie, scenes of this movie, what really stand out to you? Scenes, wow. Yeah. Um, well, honestly, that scene at the funeral or at the yeah the funeral, the the graveside there with the king laying in that. That's probably my favorite portion of it. And it's yeah. funny because we haven't talked about the skating one second. Well, right. oh, we, we will. At all. Yeah, yeah, we will. Well, yeah. that was that was right after the big skating montage, wasn't it? Yes. Because <laughs> that's how he blows off steam. Right. Right. That <laughs> was. The, I'll be honest with you. Like so. So as I was watching this movie. There was a bunch of you know. There's there's a good amount of skating scenes. Again, this movie is not a skating movie. No, it's a it's a it's, it's shoehorned it's, it's shoe yes, exactly. in, and there is skating in it, but it's not like you know, like we said, like thrashing was probably a skating movie. Well, you know, there's got to be a message here. Yeah, there's there's a message and a, and a plot I, here, and I then think. skating's in it as right. well. There's a message. Um, but one of the things I noticed was that there was the scene where 
where Brian was on the on the half pipe. You know, obviously everybody else in this movie is is some form of skateboarder. You know, you got Tony Hawk. They don't need stunt doubles. Uh, Chris, uh, Christian Slater obviously had some stunt doubles. I think Mike yes. McGill was Mike one of McGill his. Mike McGill was the one on the half pipe. Okay, so Mike McGill. Where he does the McTwist 540, which was his signature move. Okay, so in those scenes, though, to me, as I watched it, I can't tell that's not Christian Slater. I think they did a pretty good job of, yeah. you know, the wig and everything. You could look real close at the face during some of the slow-mo scenes, but, but wait, they I'm, did a oh, good wait, job. I'm, I'm getting to that. <laughs> that scene in particular, I felt like that could be Christian Slater. The scene where he's in the parking garage and yeah. he's doing like, oh, the yeah, pirouette. Oh, yeah. the, the hair. The right. hair. The <laughs> hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The hair shoots up the fucking here all of a sudden. <laughs> I thought, what? Now, uh, now, that was not the same guy, apparently? No, or? that was, um, but no, that was someone else. So he had okay. two, he had two people. So McGill, McGill was there. And when I was a kid, Mike McGill was one of the, I mean, I'm sure he's yeah. still. Well, he, he rides was, a Mike McGill board throughout right, the movie. Right, he, ha- he has the Mike which McGill. Which was the, an iconic, the skull with the snake going yes. through, which was my <laughs> favorite board when I was a kid. I, I remember <laughs> wanting yeah. that board when I was yeah. a kid. Yeah. So McGill does, I guess, the half pipe stuff, like you said, yep. and then someone else is doing yep. kind of like the the the, the, the trick. <laughs> that seems just like what the fuck. Like, why couldn't they match the wig up? Why couldn't they get like <laughs> McGill maybe to do this too? Because it was just like, damn, they they did such a good job in that one bit, maybe and now all of a sudden it's yeah. like, fuck, this is like obviously not Christian Slater. <laughs> Yeah, there was one other um, moment like that in the movie at the very end. <laughs> I don't know if we're going to, you know, we'll get to it eventually, but with Lawndale, the big climactic scene. <laughs> oh, yeah, jump, yeah. yeah. <laughs> where he, yeah, he gets knocked over. Yeah. And you see the guy, it's not him with the wig. <laughs> yeah. Flying off as he's, he's <laughs> flying off the, con- the jersey barrier there. <laughs> well, you know, there, there's we, we talked about it, and we, we kind of always do this, where we kind of weave in and out of the plot. I thought two parts that I thought were great in this movie where and where they kind of grounded it a little bit more in reality. So we talked about in the end, there's the whole chase and everything. And before the chase, you have the scene in, uh, in, in Colonel Trock's house where, where, uh, Lawndale uh, kills Colonel Trock and takes the daughter hostage. And, uh, and, uh, fucking Christian Slater's character, Brian, he comes down and does this fucking move and, and goes through a window. Oh, right, yeah. yeah. But what I liked about it was, whereas in every other movie, he'd go through the window and, like, get up and take the gun. Yeah. He's knocked the fuck yeah. out. <laughs> <laughs> he comes through a picture window. Yeah. yeah. And, and like I said, in every other movie, he would he would do a fucking Kirk roll and yep. get up and knock the gun out of his hand and take the girl. Or even if the guy got away, he would still, like, be chasing him out. He's fucking out cold yeah, for, like, yeah. three fucking minutes. There's, there's a few I scenes like that. that. And, and meanwhile, what happens to Lawndale? He escapes out the window. That's right. Window. Yeah. So basically, <laughs> he, he, just, escape. he gave him the escape <laughs> route to get the fuck out of the house. Very simply. Yeah, there, there were a few things. I, there was a scene where uh, after Brian does his big quick change to date the girl, so he so he's he looks a, a little yeah, bit more he's, conservative. He's in his, like, corduroys yeah. and sweaters. He, cut, he cuts off his frosted yeah, tips. A little, yeah. little more acceptable to uh, the Colonel Tron and his wife, a track and his wife, because uh, you know white white boys. No aren't, white boys. Yeah, so. none, none of that. Colonel, Colonel <laughs> Track has has two things going for him. He's the number one supplier of AK forty sevens to the Vietnamese <laughs> anti communist relief fund. <laughs> He's the number one fan of the L.A. Rams, yeah. and he fucking hates white kids. <laughs> Straight up. Like, I don't like white kids touching my fucking daughter. Not even his friends. Not even his yeah. friends. He's like, I no, Lawndale's not my friend. Yeah. Fucking- <laughs> this is, it was a little creepy how how uh, Brian goes after the girl just to get all the information. Yeah. But, Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. Because we have for it right away. Yeah. 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 We, yeah. We didn't mention the, the Tina character. It starts off as Vin's girlfriend. Right. And right. Brian immediately, like, fucking hones in on that <laughs> shit. Yeah. And, and, yes, it is a means to an end. But you know he has feelings for her. And what's even sure. more disturbing is she likes him like that. Yeah, yeah. it yeah. doesn't take long. It's not like like five scenes of Brian. Leave so me alone. She, it's like she's the one that makes him change. Yeah, she's just like oh, I can't date you. Look at you. Yeah, look at you. Yeah. <laughs> look at your ready. I can't. Shirt. I can't go to the orange mall to see the to see fucking I don't know uh, Predator with you. Oh god. You know, until you get a fucking suit on. He's wearing his suit and they went to go see Predator. Right. right. They went to go see the the scene where he's on the bicycle and not on the skateboard and all yeah. his friends catch him by the pier. Yeah. And they start making fun of him and I'm waiting for them to like smack him around and they're yeah. like nah it's, he's just dealing with his with his dead brother and i'm like okay where <laughs> this just turned weird yeah no he's he, he there's a point in the movie where he decides to uh it, you know <laughs> unfortunately it wasn't before his brother's funeral because that would have been more appropriate <laughs> after he shows up looking like a dickhead to his brother's funeral he, he decides to start and you think you think at first it's just to like kind of infiltrate the the but he really is he decides he's going to kind of grow yeah. up and start wearing you know like fucking like shirts and ties and stuff like that and and uh, the sweater, uh, the sweater, the sweater. <laughs> takes he takes his chain uh, earring off. All his closet, by the way, yeah. Yeah, know, right? wardrobe. His, his, his whole, closet. <laughs> exactly. Like his he, mother sees him and almost like when she drops a glass. She drops a glass. <laughs> I'm assuming some of that was Vin's stuff. 
I'm wondering. I'm wondering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's even creepier then. Yeah, yeah right? Yeah. 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 Hey, hey, you remember he, this sweater? He, yeah. finds a, yeah. he finds a pair of loafers at the bottom of his yeah, fucking yeah, his closet. He's like, oh, I've got a, I've got a, oh, I've got a pink and white striped shirt. This is perfect. Oh, that shirt. It's a Willie Ames shirt right that there. Was, that, was, that was not a good shirt. That was not, he was not looking good in that shirt. That was awful. So Lucero <laughs> and him are, 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 are discovering more stuff. There's a whole scene where he breaks into the warehouse later on in the movie. Uh, and he also does this whole like uh, <laughs> firecracker distraction thing uh, to uh, to get yeah. the guards uh, distracted, <laughs> and then he he ends up stealing the the colonel's. Uh, this was a very bold move, by the way. He's on a date with hey, her. That's right. He breaks into the crate. His office. He breaks in. He breaks oh, into. Oh, you uh, mean when he takes the? It takes the lighter. When he breaks right. in. The, yeah, I I, I kind of skipped over. Yeah, that's right. He takes the lighter and the cap. And then he ends up breaking into, but he says, he's like, you know, where's the bathroom? And it's like one of these movies where it's like, I always think when I see a movie like this, like, okay, so if I were in someone's house and I knew I had to get into like the study to find something, I would do it as fast as fucking possible. <laughs> yeah, he's pretty slow. He is that. so fucking slow. Yeah, yeah. He's literally just looking at shit, TV guy, and he's like, what's on tonight? <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. 8 p.m. on ABC, Mr. Belvedere. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Belvedere <laughs> finds out that Wesley oh, Mr. Belvedere. has started smoking. Oh, wow. This looks like a good one. And he's just oh, like, that's like oh, what I saw Vin yeah. smoking. At 8, 8.30. Who's the boss? All right. God. Mona desperately wants to fuck Tony. <laughs> and, okay. I might check that one out. Like, he's just like, he's at his own fucking pace. He doesn't uh, give a shit that, that, like, he, that these people are going to come home in any second yeah. now. I, I love when she just walked in on him. I was like, what are you doing? Yeah. Like, Nothing. I hadn't seen the movie in so long. I'm like, I'm like, she's gonna get mad and go, no, like, you know, what are you no, doing no. in Fox room? And she's just like, oh, what are you doing? He's like, oh, this is in the bathroom. She's like, yeah, no, that's over there. It's the one with the toilet in it, dickhead. <laughs> but my parents just pulled in. They're yeah. back from Chili's. You gotta go. You gotta go. Yeah. Yeah. My parents don't like white people, but they go to Chili's. <laughs> you can't be here. God, this is so funny. So uh, what else do we learn in this movie, Sean? We learned that Tony Hawk's character, Buddy. Yes, is a Pizza Hut delivery Works driver. Pizza Hut delivery. Yeah. Now you strangest pizza Pizza Hut delivery truck I've ever seen. I wanted to ask yeah, everybody yeah. here: Has anybody here ever seen a Pizza Hut delivery vehicle? Not like that. With with, with an old school hut attached to it. Yeah. No, maybe it's a it's a Cali thing. It's a, okay. it must be. It's a SoCal thing. It's got to be a SoCal thing. It's <laughs> yeah. got to be like a like if you live in the area of the Atomic Lodge Motel, yep. Disneyland. And, uh, and and that Pizza Hut, like, they have that. Yeah. because the weirdest I, yeah. little pickup. Too. It was yeah. a weird little yeah. pickup. It almost looked like an El Camino kind of thing, but yeah. smaller. It has. Yeah. It you has. got to fit 10 skaters in it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so, yeah. Jeez. <laughs> you you got to get 10 skaters in it. And and that that little pickup gave us, again, we're, we're just, we're kind of flowing everywhere, but I, this movie is hey, like. It's Pizza Hut, man. You know, they, they gave their money for the movie. <laughs> this this movie <laughs> had to have. has yeah. what I can only describe as the greatest scene of chicken I've ever seen in theatrical history. And I, I would never think that I'd say this, but it features. Oh, right. okay. It All right. features. <laughs> what was his name again? <laughs> Richard Hurd <laughs> demanding that, like, a small Vietnamese guy. You should you should really talk about that first though. Yeah, the the, the fact that he grabs a guy on the street. Where was that? Where did forced, the guy come from? Yeah, he, it was the neighbor. He was something. the guy. Oh, he worked at. Sorry, he worked at um Bolsa Video there because when he, he was calling around when Brian Kelly's calling around with those random numbers trying to find out where Nguyen was calling. Right, he called Bolsa Video. And that's the guy who answered at the time. So, Holy like, that was shit. You yeah, and he made that connection, right? Wow, he, wow. Well, he was walking in his driveway into his yeah, house. He was so I guess he told in. me, meet me at my house or something. Right. You know? So he pulled up, and there's the, the police car there. So, so uh, Richard Hurd's Lawn, Lawndale? Lawn, La- Lawndale. Lawndale yeah. forces him into the car <laughs> yeah. with the daughter in tow and makes him drive. He's like, take the car yourself. Yeah. <laughs> he makes him drive this police car. <laughs> Yeah, right. Lucero is driving around a police Lucero car. Lucero is driving uh, in a what was that? An Oldsmobile yeah. Sierra a detective <laughs> driving in a in an actual squad yeah. car with lights. You know, it's yeah. like okay, you're, you're a plain clothes policeman, but you're in this thing. Okay, that so, makes sense, right? So, so Brian this smash, is California. Brian <laughs> smashes through the window on the skateboard. Yeah. Allows Longdale to escape. knocks himself out. Allows Longdale to escape. Longdale jumps into the police car. Gets the guy from the video store to drive. And it's 38 grabs, special. Grabs <laughs> Tina. Right? Are we all together now? Yeah. They take off. Yeah. Lawndale's yelling directions all the time. Yeah. Get, get me here. Get me there. <laughs> Stop at, the, stop at the Jack in the Box. I want it, I want one animal style. Right? So then uh, we got the Pizza Hut oh, truck. Man. 
all the skaters are, are following him over. And you get that beautiful seat on the horizon. You do. That, yeah. that, was, that was pretty badass. Coming, up. I, coming I, up the hill. That was yeah. actually pretty impressive. Right, right, right. That was. Yeah. Brian makes the call. And and he calls what's his name Lucero no 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 he, he oh calls, he calls uh, Yabo Yabo, Yabo. Yeah. And, and Yabo yeah. calls all the other kids he's like Brian needs us move to action yeah. <laughs> what I what I liked about that scene was he called Tony Hawk and it's what six in the morning yeah yeah and he said Brian needs us he's like well it's it's six six he lays down so he lays like back down yeah, and yeah. there's no there's silence and you think he's gonna go back to sleep yep. and then and the he gets music back. kicks yeah. in yeah. and boom. <laughs> He, well, that's Tony Hawk for you, right there. That, yeah, you totally. He's, you got to get up early to fucking be the best skateboarder. Well, it's for in Brian. The world. It's for mm-hmm. Brian, even so, in his sweater vest. So, <laughs> so Lucero's vehicle. Gets yeah, when was stolen. the transformation back? <laughs> yeah, like, they, they never show. Yeah, that. he did. He did throw a jacket on or something. I do like the fact though that, like, in the end, when it becomes like a chase movie, he does decide to wear all the safety gear his mom gave him. Yeah, sure. He's like, oh, this shit got serious. I better put on elbow pads and a fucking helmet. <laughs> right. So. In Lucero- the fancy new deck that he's got. Yeah. <laughs> Lucero's vehicle is now commandeered by, by uh, Lawndale. So Lucero oh, no. manages oh, to yeah. grab <laughs> the, the brand new 1987 SUX. <laughs> and it's, it's like an Oldsmobile Sierra or something like that, except uh. it's got a robot voice. Right? Like, no, your, your door is a jar. Your door is a jar. Yeah. Your door is a jar. Uh, right. And I, I, I mean, I, I get it. I know that whole bit was just for laughs and it was funny, like but Eddie it was. Murphy it all was, over again. <laughs> Yo, man, someone stole your battery. <laughs> <laughs> I said we find the motherfucker. <laughs> well, it's funny because it's only funny because five minutes later, uh, just randomly you hear your right door is a jar. Yeah. Yeah. Still, it's yeah. out of nowhere. When he's getting out of the vehicle. <laughs> uh, I'll give it credit. Uh, I will give it credit. That whole chase sequence is actually pretty good. Yes. Uh, um, I I recognized the dude who drove the Corvette. Oh yeah, I looked him up my yeah, yeah. that guy? It's a stunt He's man. nobody. He's a <laughs> stunt man yeah. that's been in a million All things. Right. Yeah, but yeah. I thought one of the most one of the best parts about that dude was he was on like seventeen episodes of Leave It to Beaver as a kid. Oh yeah, so wow. he might have been one of like maybe <laughs> like, one of Beaver's friends. Um, but yeah, like when when he's Wolfie in the movie, Rutherford. <laughs> I'm watching. I'm like, I know this guy's face. You look him up on IMDb. He has got a fucking yeah. right down to the fifties because yeah. he worked as a kid. But you get the whole skitchen scene where he, you know, he's driving this fucking Corvette at like eighty miles an hour, and Brian's holding on. I, I love it. That's that guy's not a cop, and he goes, "Okay, fine, take yeah. off, yeah, yeah, go, for him. go after him." All right, kid, yeah. sure, sure, I'll listen to this kid. The kid says, yeah. you, "You know that guy that hit your car? He's not a cop." <laughs> <laughs> um, but but I do want to get to so it's such a ridiculous. We case. have this great, we have this really good chasing. I actually think the chasing is pretty good because you know you, you kind of got like it's going between different characters. I don't know who did it. Maybe you have it written down. The fucking yeah. stunt where he yeah. goes under the truck was yeah. actually oh, yeah. done. It's incredible. It's yeah. it, that scene. I mean, I actually when I watched the movie again, did I love this movie? No. I was fully awake for it. I was <laughs> I was I was into it when I was watching it. When that happened, I went, "What?" Yeah. I watched this movie it. And why? Just wait for the truck to pass by. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. No, it's cuz yeah, it's, it's good It'd be movies. cooler. Yeah. Do you know who performed that stunt? Cuz it, it So it, it's off the top of my head cuz I did read it recently. Gator, his name was Gator, mm-hmm. skating name, Mark Gator Rakowski, maybe? Okay, yeah, that's mm-hmm. what I read, yes. Okay, yeah, he performed that one stunt for Christian Slater. That mm-hmm. that that scene is unreal. So yeah, it, and, it, and the 15 kids in the back of the pickup all screaming, Going yeah! crazy. <laughs> yeah, you did it! <laughs> yeah, so there, there's, if, if, if you haven't seen the movie it's, recently, <laughs> there's a scene where they're on the highway and they're all, they're chasing after Lawndale and he's in the police car and, and, uh, and, and Brian is skitching on the back of the Corvette and there's an 18-wheeler between them. And I, I also love this part, too. So he skitches and lets go and and rolls, you know, under the eighteen wheeler. Right, he crosses ducks down. over, ducks down, yeah. crosses over, and the best part in the whole scene is, yeah, you, you do. You have you have all of his friends cheering for him. The truck <laughs> driver smiles. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the truck driver's like, yeah. <laughs> oh, that would have been terrible if I killed that kid, but it was yeah. pretty fucking cool. <laughs> Imagine, I would never be able to drive again if I murdered that kid. But wow, he, he pulled it off. Oh, <laughs> I love that. Man. I thought that was great that they actually showed that guy's uh, face. Yeah, like, the, fuck yeah. The reactions are funny. Yeah, yeah. Definitely they that. alluded to that earlier in the movie when he's in the warehouse. And the same uh, laser thing that, that his brother oh, Vin he tripped. Over it. He, you know, he went under it. Oh, he went under it. He recognized it the last yeah. uh, second. Yeah, oh, fucked under it. Yeah, it was I crazy. Went, okay. I, I watched this thing <laughs> I thought that late, was pretty impressive. Late, late. I was up yeah, was. late watching yeah. this movie. <laughs> I watched it Thursday night. I got home Thursday night, and uh, and I was like, I got I to watch Gleam of the Cube, man. And I, I wanted to bring this up, too. The the title in some regions, not in America, is A Brother's Justice. Yes. Yeah. I can't tell you. Okay, so Gleam in the Cube, he, he tells you what it is in the movie. It's Yabo says. It's like, you know, it, it's just like you're, you're, you're doing something doing perfect. Your best, you know, you're doing right, your yeah. best, right? They explain it in the movie. You tell me. 
that in Hollywood in 1987, when they pitched this movie and said, we want to call it Gleaming the Cube, how many studio people had to go, what the fuck is that? <laughs> what is yeah. that? They don't care. Yeah. They were doing you know, so I, much coke. I heard that on the DVD. <laughs> I guess if you highlight like a skateboard and you can you click a certain way, it, it goes into a video that explains what Gleaming the Cube is. Okay. I'll have to check that out. Okay. Because in all honesty, it's it not is... explained in the song. <laughs> no, you go higher and faster than anyone's ever gone before. That's all we know. In case you're wondering what the title of the movie means, <laughs> Yabo explains it at the 37 minute mark. Gleaming the Cube. We're gonna do it all night. Oh shit! Now it's sexual. <laughs> um, you should you should get to your chicken scene that you brought the whole oh. thing up for chicken. the beginning. Oh right, <laughs> right, right. So it's ten minutes later. So the greatest scene of chicken in history, all time, is is you got fucking eighties action villain star. <laughs> Richard Hurd, who at this point in his life was 55. I looked this up. 55-year-old Richard Hurd, the poor man's Carl Malden, <laughs> as Sean calls him, with with uh, with Cy Swirling's fucking uh, toupee stapled to his head. And he's telling the, uh, the the Vietnamese kid who was worked at the video store, he's telling him to drive right through all the skateboard kids. And then you just have this great moment where it's 55-year-old Carl Malden, 20-year-old Tony Hawk, who's known for being a skateboarder, who's the only person not on a skateboard in this scene, driving a fucking Mazda pickup truck with a Pizza Hut attached to the top of it. Yeah. And a real he is, he is eyeballing fucking Lawndale. Like, I will go through you, bro. Oh, I will straight God. drive through you, bro. And and who loses that game of chicken? Fucking Lawndale. The yeah. fuck, well, or maybe well. the Vietnamese kid who doesn't want to die for this dumb white dude. <laughs> you know, for his stupid whatever it is. And his bad you jacket. You know, that should be a future uh, subject. What's that? The best scenes of playing chicken. <laughs> yeah. Because there's a lot. This is like in the top fucking three yeah. that I've seen in a long time. <laughs> So what ends up happening in the end here? What what? what how do we resolve everything? So um, they Tony Hawk wins the game of chicken. The end. <laughs> um, no, so eventually they have to get out of the police car, Lawndale and his hostage. They end up on a Jersey barrier somewhere <laughs> on the highway, and somehow Brian Kelly ends up up above him where he could do this oh, crazy. Oh ollie. yeah, the way he got there was insane. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And anyway, he comes cra- even though <laughs> you know I always found this funny. Londell turns around and points the gun right at him. Could just shot him out of the sky. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but somehow it doesn't. Brian Kelly knocks the. Uh, well, remember all of Londell's actual shooting kills were all accidents. Right. True. Yeah. It was like True. a struggle during a fight. Shoots the guy dead. Yeah. He pulls it on Colonel Truck and yeah, like just shoots at him as a warning. Kills him by mistake. <laughs> yeah. He's never actually fucking purposely shot someone in this movie. Yeah. But anyway, the, you know, the skateboard knocks the gun out of his hand and the greatest stunt double scene of the movie. Yeah. The toupee flies off of this <laughs> double. He turns fully to face the camera. You can plainly see it's not Richard Hurd. No. <laughs> and he, he gets knocked out. Knocked out. And knocked out. again, to go along with what I said earlier about how great the movie is in this aspect, is that when, when fucking Brian goes to the, the window, he gets knocked out. When he does this, he's fucked up again. Yeah. 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 He's he's yeah, now he's yeah. arms broken. Yeah, yeah, he's on yeah. the fucking ground. His helmet's cracked in half. His cheek a little broke bit. His, yeah, broke his like, deck. Brand new deck. Yeah. Brand new deck. <laughs> yeah, by the way, together. just the truck was off the deck. You, you fix that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, he fixed about that. He goes, you could have yeah. put him on tighter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Yeah, you know, we could have done something else with our Sunday, Brian, instead of chase this fucking old white dude <laughs> and these weird Vietnamese people you're hanging out with. Oh, All right, man. Vin's dead. You don't have to hang out with Vietnamese people anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so that is the tale uh, of Gleaming the Cube. Uh, I, I don't, I think there the is an thing, epilogue. There is an epilogue. Yeah. It's Lucero. Uh, yes. Again, the. Uh, yeah. I don't think we talked enough about a Lucero. We honest, probably didn't. I just wanted to say that. I, I wanted yeah. to say that. Yeah, well, give us some. Give us some Lucero stuff here. <laughs> oh, geez. Well, I he, still feel like he's just such an under, underdeveloped character. You know. You know, he knows Brian's a screw up, and he said, "Hey, yeah. I was a screw up too. I, I, I recognize the symptoms." <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Screw. <laughs> <laughs> he does have one good one line I do like in the movie, where where the earlier in the, in the movie um, during I think it's during Vin's death scene or, or, or Vin, when they recover Vin's body. And one of the, uh, I think, the other cops or lab technicians oh, says yeah. that, uh, oh, you know, Chinese. And he's like, he's like Vietnamese. And he's like, they, they all look the same. And he's like, they're, or they're all the same. And he's like, they're not. Not yeah. even close. Not even yeah. close. Yeah. I, he, I like that. He hammers that, that down. Yeah. He hammers that down. And I thought, this is the most you got out of this character. Yeah. Yeah. Because the rest of it is, it, like, again, I was waiting for the origin of their friendship. Yeah. Of their weird, like antagonistic flicking him, and and it just seems like they like you find out later that they just met in the first scene. Oh, <laughs> the, the first scene, by the way, I want to bring up. 
these guys bribe oh, scoping for pools. These guys oh, yeah. Yeah. bribe. Which I think is a real pilot. thing, or isn't it? Yeah. I mean, that's an awesome scene. As as a kid, again, a young kid from Connecticut, <laughs> we're like, wow, do they really commandeer biplanes to go, right? you know, scoping around Orange County it, for Is that for a pools? real thing? I, th- I, I guess that, I've heard it. I've heard it was. Yeah, that's crazy. I've, I've heard that before, too. They, they would do that. And I don't know how, and, how, how pissed I would be if I was the guy. And I, you got to assume he's... I thought the bloody smear in the yeah. pool. The guy's <laughs> like, I got to get that cleaned up yeah. now. <laughs> and well, that's... That's uh, that, uh, the, the can I sue these guys? Country, me, can country, I sue them? Can they sue me? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> country crop. What water. the hell is his name? Uh, he was on the Bob Newhart show yeah, all the time. He's done in a million things. Yeah, I, think, I be, think he's passed on too. Now, he was but. the country crock butter guy. Yeah, yeah. 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 I recognize him immediately. Yeah, I went, that guy's a character actor. Yeah, yeah. But the other thing is, is like when they they pay this dude and he doesn't <laughs> want to take him up. They bring him up. They bring, <laughs> yeah. they bring him up. And then I'm they only put, bringing one of you. They put stickers all over his fucking yeah. windows. But it's like Tony Hawk and Bones Brigade, yeah. so it's all just product placement. Yeah, yeah it's, I don't know. And there's a lot of coke in this too. Yeah, there's yeah. A lot they, of coke they, they, yeah. Brian buys her a coke. There's yeah. a coke machine in the school. Yeah, yeah. There's, 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 there's Disneyland Coke and wow, this movie Pizza is like Hut. Pizza Hut. Pizza Hut. Yeah. <laughs> and Pizza Hut, I think, is Pizza Pepsi, probably. right? I think Pizza. I, mean, I haven't been to one in a while, but I think Pizza Hut's a Pepsi. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, it, no, it, it they're may, owned by Pizza uh, by Pepsi. Yeah. It may not have been oh, then, though. though. Yeah, probably yeah, not. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. Well, I'll I, that I, I will <laughs> say there's an impressive list of skaters, especially for this time. Yeah, mm-hmm. in this movie. Oh yeah. Besides well, Tony Hawk, there's Tommy Guerrero. He was right up there. Um, you know, McGill. At one point, they're wearing a Christian Asoy shirt, who I don't yeah. think was in the movie, but he was badass too. Well, I mean, everybody in uh, Brian's group of friends, except for Max Perlick, is yeah. a pro skater. But, but Max actually, he was, you can tell he skated. Yeah. He can do it. Yeah. I don't know if he did, you know, he didn't really do any stunts, but he was ollieing and he was doing all this stuff. He was. You know. I, I love the fact that. At one point, there's only like six of Brian's friends, and at the end of the movie, there's like 30, 30 of them <laughs> piled into the back of that pickup. Yeah. Like, where do they all come from? Two, <laughs> two other odd things about, about Yabo, Max Prolix's character, <laughs> is that um, – they hang out and I think a bomb shelter. Right. Yes. Yeah. That was the that's cool. his room. Yeah. Is that his room? Yeah. yeah. His room's a bomb shelter. Yeah. And they and again, I did look this up because I when I'm watching it, I thought so. It's so timely. His mother <laughs> is 80s comedian Rita Rudner. Yes. Really? Oh, really? That was Rita Rudner. Oh, I didn't, oh She has like wow. no lines. She has one line. I think she one says line. when they're eating dinner, she says something about Come like, in or go out, yeah. don't crush my whatever the name don't is. Don't crush my yeah, my, my, yeah. my azaleas or something. Yeah. And I'm looking at her I'm like, I haven't seen her in years, but she was like always like she was, you know. Talk slow. I'm like, the, I look, and when I'm looking at the movie, I'm like, Rita fucking Rudner. <laughs> and it wasn't, it wasn't well, I like that one. Yeah. And it, it wasn't like, like in her early career. It was just like yeah. this weird in the middle of her being kind of a popular comedian. Hmm. Someone must have just said, You want to play out someone's mother? She must movie? have knew somebody yeah. or, or somebody knew her and said, Could you do this? Yeah, it'd be great. Yeah. That's kind of funny. Yeah. Rita Rudner shows up in this movie. Yeah. So yeah. now we're going to, we're going to do some box office stuff in a minute. But yeah. I wanted to ask real quick. Um, because we, I haven't seen this since I was a kid. John, obviously, and Lloyd, same, same yeah. thing. Happened, maybe 30 you, years. 30 years. <laughs> now, you like this movie. Obviously, you picked it. Is this something you go back to a lot, or is this something, have you not seen this in a while? I hadn't. Well, no, I, yeah. Well, a couple weeks ago, I watched it on Amazon, then I watched it again on DVD this week. Okay. So, I hadn't seen it for a while. And the funny thing is, um, <laughs> I, I like it a little bit less going back. I think the <laughs> nostalgia may have faded, you know, but it just, it always held a place in my heart in the late 80s. You know, right. just for the reason, just for the skating reasons, really. Funny thing about the alternate titles, though. So you said a brother's justice is one of the that, that, that seemed to one be the one that popped up the most in other yeah. countries. Yeah. Skate or die too. Was, uh, was I saw that in one. Title. Yeah, but a brother's justice. I want to say early nineties. I was on, flipping through in Channel Eleven, WPIX there, <laughs> out in New York. Mm. They would always have a Saturday afternoon movie, and there was TV a movie picks. called A Brother's Justice, and I'm like, what the hell is this? And it's like Christian Slater graphic. Oh no, kidding! And it was gleaming the cue. So huh. Channel Eleven was calling it a really Brothers justice. Yeah, I've only ever known it as gleaming the cube. It, it all, yeah, it, that's it, the only time I've ever yeah. seen it. You know, uh, marketed like that. It yeah. also said that it was the working title. So when they were filming it, it was called <laughs> a Brother's Justice, okay. and then Gleaming the Cube came afterwards. Um, and maybe from that line of dialogue, maybe some of that. that I think more people would watch something called the Brothers Justice. I think that's. Yeah. I, I agree. I mean, if, if, if you're really yeah. trying to get viewers, because yeah. I don't even know is the is gleaming the cube even a term for real skaters? Or they just make that up for this? I, I have no clue. I, kinda, I, I was looking it up. And, I, I mean, looked it up, and there's a line somewhere that some uh, some famous skater and I, I don't remember which one he mentioned it in an interview in a magazine, and maybe even uh, Thrasher, and it was mentioned once. And then people then turned it into something like this. Yeah, I mean, yeah. again, I, guess, Hollywood I don't think it. the yeah, word and, and, "cube" is associated with skateboarding. Well, that's in the any thing. Way. Yeah, like, yeah. And and it was called gleaming, and it was gleaming was spelled with two e's. 
Yeah. You know, and that kind of thing. And it's like, okay, well, they, they turned this into something completely different. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, even the it word. It sounded like he was just stoned you, off his mind. You think when he was Tony Hawk would set him straight? Like, we well, don't see this shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't think they. It was, it's more marketing. It's because you could see a lot of this is marketing for let's get more yeah. of the kids to do this. No, we're yeah. polishing the sphere, not gleaming the sphere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? Polishing the sphere. Yeah. <laughs> sphere. Stroking the knob. Stroking the knob. <laughs> um, uh, I did read, uh, I was reading up on some stuff and I did read that uh that Tony Hawk and Christian Slater are still friends 30 years later. Yeah, yeah, yeah I did which see I thought that. was pretty cool. Yeah. Uh it really was funny seeing Tony Hawk that young because I I rem- I mean Tony Hawk was a no, I certainly was, didn't recognize him. <laughs> Tony Hawk was a yeah. presence when I was a kid. I used to I used to again, I had that little period of time where I was into all that stuff. I used to look at Thrasher with my friends and stuff. And again, the Mike McGill board, like you said, I wanted one of those. It was, like, it was iconic. Up it was like Tony Hawk board. Yeah. Yeah, the birdhouse fucking yeah. logo and everything. All right, so uh, we'll, we'll do our, our uh, ratings in a minute, but I, every episode we do the Pint Movie Invitational, we always go over what was the top 10 box office movies the weekend that this thing opened. So we're mm. going to talk about what they were, how much they made, and uh, we'll talk about where Gleaming the Cube uh, ended up on, on that whole list. <laughs> All right. Where I don't think it's anywhere near that list. 72. So this opened on January 13th, 1989, uh, weekend ending the 15th of, uh, of January. As I throw up in the mic. Good sunny <laughs> movie to put out in January. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're thinking California, yeah. Orange County in mm-hmm. January. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> so number one at the box office that weekend had been out for five weeks. It made $10.1 million. Rain Man. Oh. Hey, uh, right. Rain Man. Uh, number two, it had been out for six weeks with $6.7 million. Twins. Oh. Nice. Uh, <laughs> Julius. <laughs> <laughs> Number three, and I'm going to give you... You got a- all the good stuff. I got all the bad stuff. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh. Hey, the sperm milkshake. Sperm <laughs> mil- I was just going to say sperm milkshake. Number three, with $5.1 million, four weeks, I'm going to give you a vocal hint. Did you ever know that you're my hero? Uh, is that Beaches? Beaches. Wow. Bette Midler and someone else. Who's in that? Is that... That's that share, isn't it? No, um, the share. Barbara Hershey. Barbara Hershey. Oh, Barbara yeah. Hershey. Yeah. That yeah. movie. Yeah. I've not. You know, I've never <laughs> wow. seen that. I've never seen that. There's there's a rarity from Lloyd. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're uh, right. Number four it had been out for four weeks. Four point nine million dollars. I had to look this up, but I I actually have seen this movie. Uh, Gina Davis and William Hurt, the accidental tourist. Mm. Oh man. Yeah. Uh, number five. William four Hurt. weeks and four point <laughs> five million dollars. Now back now back in the day uh, when when movies like that you know were being made. If Batman came out, they made a porno called Splatman. Jurassic yeah. Park would be Jurassic Pork. Uh, Saving Private Ryan was Shaving Ryan's Privates. This movie uh, just didn't need to change its title. Pulled that right out, didn't you? Working Girl. <laughs> working Girl. <laughs> <you> just <laughs> worked both ways. The porno of Working Girl was called Working Girl. Is that Helen <laughs> Slater? <laughs> uh, no, that was, um, that was uh, Melanie, Melanie Griffith, Griffith and Harrison yeah, Ford. Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, another one I've never seen. Number six, a movie I've seen a You've million times. You've never seen times. Working Girl? No, honestly. Really? I think she's actually seen. naked in that, isn't she? I, Oh, is she? Or is that a different movie? <laughs> I think she was be. naked in Cherry 2000, where she was oh, the God. robot, right? Oh, that yeah. awful film. Yeah. <laughs> no, she was naked in the one with Jeff Daniels, where she was like something with Ray Liotta, where he was the crazy boyfriend. Yeah. Something. It was called something. something I saw her naked or, so many times in the 80s. Yeah. It just kinda, <laughs> so did Don Johnson and Antonio Banderas. <laughs> <laughs> they probably get together and talk about that. <laughs> Don Johnson, I cannot, I cannot believe. I ever married her after you married her three times. <laughs> <laughs> I made movies with Salma Hayek and I married her. <laughs> uh, number six, uh, one of my favorite comedies of all time, four point four million dollars, seven weeks. The Naked Gun from the Files uh, of Police yeah. Squad. I remember seeing that in the theater. Uh, I yeah. never saw the theaters, I, but I remember when it came out, like on HBO, yeah. <laughs> watching it just re- fucking repeatedly. Because yep. uh, number seven. Uh, six weeks, four million dollars. Uh, Mississippi Burning. Gene oh. Hackman, I think, mm-hmm. won the phone. Mm-hmm. Never saw it. A little heavy, you know. For, for it's good. Uh, I've heard it's good, but yeah, the, when I, I was probably twelve at this time, so <laughs> I'm, I'm not. <laughs> uh, number eight, I did see this in the theaters with my dad because we, as we talked about before, my dad and me saw all the shitty movies in the theaters. Three point three million dollars, and it opened that same week. And I think we mentioned this in the last show too. Funnily enough. Deep Star Six with yeah. Greg Evigan, <laughs> the, un- the 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 underwater one of the three underwater movies of so 1989. Greg Evigan, who's the girl? DJ in that? and the Bear. Uh, Nia Peoples was Nia in that. Nia Peoples and uh, oh, Matt Nia McCoy Peoples. was in that. Yeah, and oh, and then uh, who's the guy from? Who was the guy from um, RoboCop that was doing the coke off the hooker's tits and gets blown up by uh, by Ronnie Cox? What was it? Uh, Ferrer? Miguel Ferrer. Oh man, uh, he was in yeah. Deep Star Six. Yeah. 
Number nine. I saw this in the theaters, too. Uh, Three weeks or three million dollars had been out for five weeks. Uh, Steve Martin and Michael Caine, Dirty Rotten Scoundrels. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Cork on the Fork. (laughs) Ruprecht. Ruprecht. Have you been banging your pots again? (laughs) And uh, $1.9 million, nine weeks in release. Number 10. It is not gleaming the cube, so it did not crack the number 10. (laughs) Big surprise. Uh, Oliver and Company. I think is that cartoon dogs? Uh, that's, that's yeah, Disney? Cartoon. yeah, Disney cartoon dogs. Uh, if you're curious was where the, I don't think it was Leaving Disney. the Cube landed for the first weekend, was it, it was uh, seven seven hundred forty thousand dollars. It opened in four hundred and sixty six theaters, eighteenth place. Oh, eighteenth! Yeah. Wow, way and up there. and wow. I looked two weeks. This is all box office mojo, which is very very good. I looked two weeks after it never. It, ne- <laughs> that it goes, it. It goes uh, to the twentieth. Right it peaked at 18. Yeah. yeah. And then you can go in further and see like the highest number of theaters it, it, it played in yeah. was 466. They, they didn't want all those teenagers in yeah. the theaters. It, it literally right. got new life on home video. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, no. Oh, I, yeah. When I saw this movie, it was on home video or HBO, yeah, one yeah, of yeah. the two. Yeah. I remember me and my friends watching it. And again, this was around <laughs> the time we were into skateboarding. So it was, it was definitely a what, big what thing. What a chip. What a shitty time for movies, like in the theaters. <laughs> Some good movies, but yeah. the number one, two, three, they've been out like over a month. Yeah. 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 Well, nothing movies to used to play them. a lot more. Yeah, and and again, you, you, you got to remember January, I think, just That's historically just yeah. Yeah. is just like, yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. like this is where we put shit to die. Yeah. Yeah. You know, this yeah. is where we put shit that like, we're not worried about if you're in the Like, like leaving the cube. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's going to yeah, come out in it. January. <laughs> Nobody's going to fucking see it. Put it out in June. <laughs> <laughs> Someone will go. <laughs> All right. So let's let's go real quick. Uh, now, we, we do a scale of one to five. Uh, we recently changed it where quarter scale is fine because it was too, too, it's too hard half scale. We were doing half scale, and the quarter scale kind of does help. One through five, one no, being the worst. It does actually help. One being the worst, five being the best. And if you uh, truly uh, truly hate this movie and you want to give it a John, we, you can give it a zero if you want. John gave it nice. adaptation of zero at one point. And if the movie is a zero. So we'll start with the Manster. <laughs> Manster, on a scale of one to five, what do you give Gleam in the Cube? All right. So for 1989, I'm going to say for rewatchability – just your your base grade. What do you give this? If zero is Millie Vanilli, blame it on the rain. Okay. And five is Love Shack. <laughs> okay. That's a weird. You got yeah. a weird fucking yeah, baseline really, going man, there. If I ever had to I hear gotta Love give it Shack a, again, a one. Really. Give it a one. Yeah, on that scale. Okay. All right, John. What do you give it? Uh, it, it is a one. You and, give it a one too. Oh yeah. Okay. It's it's not a good movie. <laughs> All right. It is not a good movie. It's fun to watch these character actors dance around the the main plot. But that plot is so weird. It it doesn't quite work. Yeah, and it, and it is a skate. Right. It's a skateboard movie that you know I wasn't into it like you guys were. So right, yeah. it, it never it never found a home. Well, you're from Portland. Skateboards haven't come out there yet. No, trust me, <laughs> there were skateboards. They, they were just they were still building them on metal <laughs> metal uh, roller skates. So yeah. All right. I'll I'll, I'll we'll, I, we'll, I wish I had a picture of one of those. We'll things. leave we'll leave our guest uh, Sean for last and find out what he thinks. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna say. I think a part of like doing these movie uh, invitationals is um, when we start talking about them, I always feel like I unearth stuff that like maybe was there when I watched it. And so my initial thought this morning was I was going to give this a two. I'm like, this is a two because there's <laughs> there's a lot like, again, a lot of it bumps up like the skateboarding in it is there's a lot of incredible stuff in there and there's some good stuff. And then as we talked about a little bit more, um, it, it can't go to a two and a half for me, but I'll give it a two and a quarter. I'll give it a two and a quarter because I felt like. The nostalgia isn't as strong for me, even though I enjoyed this as a kid. It wasn't one that like I, I held through. Like if, if we watched the Goonies, which I loved, and I still probably would enjoy, I would probably go like, okay, that's like a four, even though I hadn't thought about it a long time. I'd give this a two and a quarter. I definitely can't go as mm. low as a one. And and as we talked about it, I, I thought more about like the relationship between Christian Slater's character and Vin's character and, and stuff like that. So yeah, I go two and a There's quarter. There's good stuff in there. It yeah. just it just can't get to that second level for me. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Sean. Don't feel thwarted. Don't feel pressure. By, don't feel pressure. <laughs> if you this is a five to you, it's this, a five to you, and we respect that. Just remember, right. this is not adaptation. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, first off, I apologize for bringing this back into your lives. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> we've we've said it to everybody. Uh, the whole idea of this is is whatever you pick is what we it's do. It's a curiosity. It really was for yeah. me more than anything yeah. else. And I'll be damn. I'll tell you right now what I like about shows like this. Is that like so when we did when we did Lloyd's and, and it was great we did the thing and even though John's not a huge fan me and Lloyd are huge fans 
You go on like anything with podcasts. There's 1,800 podcasts with the thing. People talking about the thing. Yeah. There's not a lot of yeah, the cube ones. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so at the very least, right. you helped us corner the market for a little while. <laughs> right. hey, for that I, person I, who might be looking for the Gleam in the Cube podcast, you got it right here. Thanks to Sean McLaughlin. This mm. goes viral, you know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You never know. <laughs> All right. So 1989 me. Yeah, okay. Four and a half. Four and a half. All right. 2019 me, and I'm going to be honest, two and a half. Two and a half. Okay. It's, I still enjoy it. All right. it. It's, I it's, still enjoy it, but well, it's more for the skating. The, the plot okay. sucks. I, I like yeah, the, the fact that you gave it the two age ranges. Yeah, because I mean, it, it works because it, yeah. you really look at it because as I watch it, I'm like, man, this is really not geared to an adult audience at all. It's it's aimed right at that age level. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, yeah. well, I mean, yeah, again, as we talked about. The central character is like is so anti adult. Yeah, and, and, and the I mean? lines that he's saying in that one yeah. scene that we were talking about, it it, it really comes out heavy. Every that, adult you know, character in so it, so the kids are going to be right for that. Yeah. Every adult character in this movie is either a murderer, <laughs> a parent, a parental figure, or or like the one that like you consider like an adult Lucero is like a good cop. Yeah. yeah. But everybody else is kind of like you know his parent his parents are against him for this reason, you know, because of his attitude. The the, the colonel's just like a fucking, you know, well, he's, the indifference of the colonel is just hysterical. Yeah. I mean, you get to the end of the movie when when they talk to uh, the girl and you're like, so so what about your dad? And she just shakes her head. Obviously, he didn't survive the, the gunshot. But that's it. You know, she just yeah, shakes her head. Yeah. You know? She just puts her head Can down. We talk, we talk, it was sad. It was sad. Can we talk about that for just one minute before we end the show? Is This is a trope in movies that I, I've noticed my whole life. And I just, I can't picture in real life this ever being a thing. I can't picture like, you know, okay, so me, you, and Lloyd go out on an adventure. And, and Lloyd gets fucking killed. Right. I can't picture you saying to me, like, you know, Lloyd, and I just go... <laughs> I you shake your head. In, in real life, you would go, "Oh, he got an axe through the head like three, like two yeah. hours ago." We like, saw, like, his, we saw his brain. Because even like even my favorite movie of all time does it when when uh, when uh, Hooper says to to Brody Quint, and he just goes. It's a trope in movies where when people yeah. like mention someone, they never say they die. They just <laughs> no. shake their head. Yeah. And she does this in this when he says, yeah. "You know, yeah, what happened to your dad? How's your dad?" And she just like looks down and goes, and, and, "Like if it was me, I'd be like." So is he sick? Yeah. Is yeah. he in the he's, hospital? No, no, or? He's dead. Oh no, dead. Yeah. Oh shit! I didn't know you were going. He's, he's dead. He's, he's dead. totally dead. I, I wanted to say I didn't. I forgot to bring that up. Hit the uh, Christian Slater, his his speech style that he's got really started to develop in this movie. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. It's yeah. in the early parts you don't catch it. There's like later on as the movie progresses, you get more and more of him doing this. Yes. Yeah. You know, and it was. It's fun to watch that. About yeah. I like that. about I, I, when I was reading up on Slater, just doing a little bit of research for this, in like 2010 or 2011, somewhere around there, he played uh, McMurphy in broad on Broadway oh, in really? Cuckoo's Nest. <laughs> and I and I mean I know now he's he's kind of gotten you know that was his thing early on was yeah. like yeah. he's like the little kid Jack Slater. Oh, Jack yeah, Jack yeah. But like, but I wonder mm-hmm. if like part of it is that I wonder if he brings that out again. Because like you know he, he did get away from it. He did get away from it because yeah. like if you remember back in the day, like that's what everybody just like like he's Jack Nicholson. Yeah. You know, I mean he's just trying to be Jack Nicholson. And, and Nicholson in Heather's, hated it. <laughs> yeah, and in Heather's he was like you know yeah he ain't really yeah. doing it all the time. Yeah. yeah. All right. So that's been this episode. Yeah. We we talked about gleaming the cube. We had a good time. The, gleaming the cube. The gleaming the cube. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the monster, Sir John Johnny. Now, Sean. Anytime you want to come on, man, you're always welcome. Uh, and we will uh, do another one of these episodes with you, and we'll see what weird skateboarding movie from 1987 you can pick next yeah, time. I'll, you wanna, I'll find something. How about Rollerball? We can do Rollerball. Mm. <laughs> Ooh, or maybe Solar Babies. Remake, Babies. The remake, remake or the, Solar, either oh, one. That remake was the remake was terrible. Was awful, <laughs> you know how you know the remake of, Solar, of, of uh, Rollerball was bad? It starred Chris Klein. <laughs> yeah. Ouch. Yeah, hey, he was hot for. He was hot for like six minutes months, in yeah. 1999. Now he's on the Flash. Yeah. <laughs> Is he really? Yeah, he did a whole season. Uh, I, I I got off that. Ah, see ya. See ya. It's over, Johnny. It's over! Nothing is over! Nothing! You just don't turn it off!